Hi there, and welcome to another episode of The Inevitable. This is Motor Trends Podcast, where we talk about the future of the automobile. We're talking about cars that are electric, cars that drive themselves, cars that maybe don't even need steering wheels, uh, what the future is going to look like, and the people that are going to be driving them, building them, thinking about them, inventing them. I'm Johnny Lieberman. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host. Ed Lowe. Hello. He's Mr. Motor Trend, as I like to say, for no good reason. And today, we have a, a very interesting guest. Your good friend. Uh, well, my uh, he's becoming a very good friend of mine, but okay. uh, he, he's, a, he's an actor. Um, he's a car guy? He's a big car enthusiast, and he, he, he was, like, impressed. He was excited to meet me because weird. I, <laughs> cause I used to make videos about cars, uh, driving cars back in the day. Um, and his name is uh, Philip Morris, believe it or not, but yep. he goes by Phil Morris. Uh, you We're going to make no smoking jokes on this episode. No, not one. But uh, you might know him from shows like Seinfeld, uh, Bosch. He was uh, uh, well. You're going to find out. But uh, he 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 was. He told me this crazy story about how he was on uh, a very very famous show from a very very long time ago, which I yes. find hard to believe. But, right. But he, he's a, he's a good dude. He 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 just loves cars. He loves cars. He loves German cars. He's kind of a. Yeah. My understanding is on the brief. He's a he's a super Porsche guy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And this episode is going to be very different from others. Uh, in that he has really no native interest in the future of automobiles, like electrification. Sure. So Johnny and I, I think we're going to try to sell him on it. We're going to try to convince him. But, you know, we've had other uh, celebrities. Like, you remember James Marsden, who yeah. was like, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd check it out if it's cool. Type yeah, thing. I, but I don't think we've ever had somebody could just kind of come in right off the bat and say, not into it. Yeah. Well, but, that's fair. Well, we had we tried to get uh, David Freiberger on, who just said, no, right. I'm not even interested in appearing on your show. <laughs> right. To, to, Thanks, David. To talk smack all Appreciate over, uh, you know. Right. EVs. So, I, look, I'm looking forward to it. I did the research, but I didn't. Get a chance to print everything out. That's ah, okay. But uh, he, he can talk. We're gonna. Yeah, he's a. You he's can a, talk. He's I a big personality. We can all talk. Let's welcome him in. All right, Mr. Phil Morris. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Here with my new friend, <laughs> Phil Morris, and and we are new because we met on a, a top of a mountain. Yes, we did. Um, there's this thing that, that well, I was told you guys are good old friends. No, like, we're good. It new just friends. seems like we are yeah. because we hit it off so. Good. It was like, hey, hey. Well, it was it was funny because you were wearing a hat and sunglasses. Yeah. Uh, the disguise, as I once heard uh, <laughs> a famous actor's girlfriend uh, told him, he couldn't get in somewhere. It was really, it was a Bentley party, and the real famous guy. I'm not gonna name his name, but real famous. And they wouldn't let him in. And the, the you know the, the model he was dating was like, take off your disguise. And he does. And they're like, yes, you're still not on the list, sir. <laughs> and, I, and then I walked in like, hey, hey, look at Schwarzenegger. How you doing? You That's know, great. It was it was really fun. But how'd you guys meet? Um, we met at uh, the Good Vibes Breakfast Club oh, up okay. up up uh, one Friday morning, and our mutual friend Jay. Yep. Said Johnny, do you know Phil? I go no. And we start talking, and mm. then I'm like, oh my god, you're uh, Jackie from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, the jig was up by then. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. It took me a second, and I was like, oh my, because he's got um, well, a whole bunch of cool cards, but right. a uh, you can say it. Yeah, I have, a, I have a nice 2018 Audi R8 um, RWS uh, rear wheel series, right. and uh, I love this group. I've been looking for a, a car group, not necessarily a club. That was kind of like my tribe. You know yeah. I mean? And the GVBC, the Good Vibes Breakfast Club, is definitely that. Because yeah. the people up there, you can meet people like you yeah. or me yeah. or, or a guy with a Vega, yeah. a twin turbo Vega who's yeah. just rocking it. And, and so everybody's or, very, very cool. Or 959 shows up. Or 959. Or, or so, some, some manufacturers are like, It's intense. how do you, I get my cars up there? Yeah, you know? it's intense. Was that your first time going when you met him? Or you'd no, been, or you'd I been had going? been up like maybe a couple of months. And I'm pretty new to the group as well. Okay. And then um, I met Magnus Walker, who came, who comes every so often. Yeah. Yep. And then used John to come all the time. Yeah. yeah. And then Johnny was up there, and and um, I don't know if you guys were doing a, a, a thing or not. But no. Yeah, it was just cool. Just it was hanging. just great to, to know him. And if you're a car guy, you in Los know Angeles or girl, it's actually guy, car the, person. The number of women up there. Oh, first awesome. of all, first of all, I'm gonna uh, just uh, the number of black people there mm. to me is incredible because I do a lot of car stuff and. Talk about underrepresented, but up there, it's like, you know, 20%. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, well, it is California, so there's a lot of sports figures, music figures. Yeah, but this is just guys coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who have it together. You but, know? but yeah, but it's like, I was I was like, wow. I, like, I'm like Byron Bowers I met up there, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I wish. I, Reggie's I, I, comes up. 
Reggie, did you get Reggie yeah. up there? Did he go? Was he going on his own? We got Reggie up there. Okay, but like I told Eric Kendricks, but but I'm like, this is so like just different. Yeah, you know. Well, I got turned on to it by Niles Evans and Bentley Kyle Evans, who are producers. Okay, Niall okay. produces the um, uh, what's his name? He's so hilarious. He's a host on many things. He used to be married to Mariah Carey. Nick Cannon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So oh, he's right. the producer of Nick Cannon's show. And then okay. uh, Oh, Bent- yeah, I, right. know, I know who he is. He drives right. a black yeah. drop top yep, yep, Porsche. Yep. And then Niall, or Bentley, it was a producer of uh, Jamie Foxx mm-hmm. and uh, Martin. And I met him there. And he also produced a show I did called Love That Girl. I saw him pull out of the GBBC one day. And I was like, where's that? Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? I, I want to go. And so right, the next right. week I came, and, and huh. I've been going ever since. Well, I'll oh, tell cool. you, uh, as somebody who has never been and probably will likely never go, because I have to work for a living. I look at your, <laughs> I look at your post on Friday from Good Vibes uh, Breakfast Club. I'm just like, oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, there he, there he is up again, screwing around with his yeah. friends on a Friday. I, I like how I like how the, the guy, the guy that runs editorial for Motor Trend, thinks driving cars on a really he's good screwing road. around. Well, he's screwing yeah, around. I'm yeah. driving a desk these days. I'm driving a PowerPoint uh, is that presentation. My fault? Yes, it's my fault. Uh, we know, Ed, we go pretty early, and we're who, done by before noon. I mean, who, yeah. I mean, whose whose fault is this? It's mine. Okay, but it's far. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it's far for you. It's yes. Malibu. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's it's. You're St. I'm Mary. in Manhattan Beach. I know. It takes you at least. It takes. I smell the jealousy. It takes, yeah, so I, 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 <laughs> but maybe. See, this is why we're good friends. Maybe we'll carpool. Yeah. So, uh, no, no it's, look, it's, it's, it is fun. And like I said, I mean, like Christopher Pagani yeah. called me. Johnny, mm-hmm. how do I get my car up there? You wow. got this place you go. You uh, drive it. Yeah. I go, give it to me. No, literally. I go, give it to me. I'll take it up there. Uh, Gunther Works does it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times OEMs stop there because that's, you know, Angeles Crest yeah. is their testing route validation. Audi, Audi tried to get a. Didn't they get? Didn't Donkey get something up there? Or no? no, he got the RS threes. At, he got the RS each on back when Malibu was a thing. Oh Malibu yeah, 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 that yeah. was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got the RS threes there. But I took an RS three up, and they they know. I mean, one of the reasons I, I get as many cars as I do is they they want me to bring that car to this little gathering because a lot of people there buy these type of cars. Yep. And then post yep. about them on social. And Absolutely. well, there's a big social thing component right. to it. Oh, too. it's a big but, village, but, you know. But it's I... but it's cool, and it's like. It's so decent. I mean, I guess Jay and Nicole sort of mm-hmm. run it, but mm-hmm. all they do is bring like the most donuts. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, and and the best spirit. I mean, they're yeah. just beautiful people. So yeah, of course. I've done their podcast as well, Cars and Comedy. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they get great people there. They had you, had Jay Leno. It's they have... crazy who they get. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a little <laughs> like un- unknown, but now getting known. Gem. Yeah. Um, Really very, very cool. And people. I don't know if you know about this, but it used to be called Late Night Playset because mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. they have the uh the the set of the you know, the late show with Letterman, Letterman. set. Everything Jay was a set builder yeah. or is a set builder. What do you mean they have it? He, he, he bought it. He bought everything. Room. Yeah. The desk, in, the chairs, the backdrop. But you walk into their condo and it's like a normal, you know, Burbank or wherever they live, Toluca Lake ish kind of condo, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you turn the corner and there's the set of the tonight show. <laughs> it's awesome. But man. it's it's automated. So he's got like a, a touch controller to like blow bubbles. Move the cameras, do the lights. It's insane. Right? It's killer. Yeah, it's that, so much okay. fun. So I follow they they I, whatever we did. So who do we who do we have on? Because they follow me now on Instagram or something. Or I follow them now. Yeah, but, we we invite him to st- like when we did the drive-in movie during COVID. Uh, um, we, whatever movie he showed up. Okay. Um, he's on. He's in our universe. Mm-hmm. Our, yeah. sphere. Friend our sphere. Motor, friend of motor. Friend, friend of, friend of, of motor the brand. He's a motor friend. Yes. Motor trend friend. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we've established that this is how you met Johnny. You have uh, you're a very generous person with but, uh, with but, flaws in terms of the friends you've made. But, yeah. real, but real quick, <laughs> I was freaking out because um, I w- so I never really watched Seinfeld. Uh, I was a huge career enthusiasm person. When I met my wife, she's like, what do you mean you haven't watched Seinfeld? I'm like, I just, no, I don't know. I don't know. It missed yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So my wife sort of forced me to start watching Seinfeld. I'm like, oh, this is actually really funny. And half of it is Larry David, who, you know. Right. Uh, but your character, you know, Jackie, all, Lord Jackie, always, <laughs> like, stood out to me. And, and you know, I have definitely favorite characters from the right. show. So when I met you, I was just like, well, oh, and I, oh, I literally dude. got down the hill. I'm like, oh, you're not going to. By the way, I like, I'm on a podcast with Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> you know, whatever. But I was like, Amy, you're not going to believe who I met. Like, And she was freaking uh, out. Oh, my God. Johnny, I love you. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So. 
<laughs> okay. It was, it was so Matt, so and yeah. you had you had known about him? Oh well, here's the deal. Yeah. I, I've I've watched every single episode of Head to Head. I've watched every single episode I'm of, sorry. of Best wow, Driver's Car, is, wow. Ignition. <laughs> I, I mean, I have that kind of life, well, Ed. Okay. okay, you know, wow. I'm just a car get you uh, like, person. So yeah, I should is, be this actually. Is what, this is what he thinks of my work. That's um, not true. Is... I have every single one of my original Hot Wheels. <laughs> okay. Don't oh, hate. Really? Don't ha- yes. Wow. wow. Yes. When they first started making them, and I got the the collector's case. Trust me, I am nerdy wow. as it comes and uh i actually auditioned for the first iteration of um um what is it uh, the the car thing from england and now they do it in america top gear top gear uh, when they hired adam and yeah. um, tanner yeah 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 i auditioned and i brought in all my hot wheels and i brought in like all these great auto courses that i had with uh-huh. Mario. Okay. no i'm a real car nerdy guy Okay. So, it's funny because I also auditioned and I got a phone call that was like, oh man, you were great. But you know, we found this guy that looks just like you, but he's Southern, so we can bring in the NASCAR demographic. And it was Rut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. I remember I was just like, oh. And it took me a long time to like be nice to Rutledge. <laughs> right? I mean, that yeah. was a coveted. It took me, it took me a gig. long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a nice guy. He is a he's the like, nicest nice guy. Like, yeah. Nice. Kinda, they're all. They yeah. were all cool yeah, yeah, cats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Adam, Adam and Rutledge are really cool. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Tanner's, Tanner's great. I Tanner's love a Tanner. friend. I, 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 I drove you know Tanner's old car up Pikes right. Peak, and I will say like I had a lot of questions before I went, and Tanner showed up at a practice session we were doing, and I was like A B Y Z, and he's like yes yes no no no. So he really helped me out. Sure. Like, big cool. Time. cool 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 cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just fun to make fun of. Yes. I, I, I like so are when, you, Johnny. So I, are you. I like when Adam makes fun of him because, like, basically most of his comeback, whatever, whenever Tanner says something to Adam, Adam's like, "Yeah, well, at least I could read." <laughs> Which is... Adam's rough. You can't fire at Adam. No, I know. He came and did an episode of the New Love Boat that I was in years ago. Oh wow! So we met. Coolest cat, man. It was one yeah. of the coolest episodes we ever did. He and this bunch of bachelor friends yeah, yeah, were yeah. on it. He's a cool cat. So you, so you have this. You actually have a huge, long, crazy history. Oh, you don't in, even know in Hollywood. No, I well, I, I'm getting an inkling from the Seinfeld piece, but also oh, forget about that. Wait, well, hang on, hang on. Well, no, no. So we, we had we booked you. We worked with podcast one people. They're awesome. Kirsten booked you. Mm-hmm. I have an assistant, and she's like, she's helped me out with this thing, and she knows this. I don't think she cares. She's like, she sends me a picture. Uh, she sends me it. She's like, this guy was on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, what? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. talk about talk about that. Oh man, I loved it. Uh, Will, <laughs> first, first, for I mean, forget what's happening with Will now. Right. But back right. then, um, Will Smith was a force of nature, and, and sure. uh, to do the show was great. So here's Will. Every time we'd have a break, he and I would go to his room and play chess. Oh. Chess, chess. Oh, nice. He's that kind of guy. Is yeah, he good? Yeah, yeah. Is oh he good? yeah, Is he's he good really chess? good because okay. I'm good, and he was kicking my butt. And and he just was so sweet, and he was just so giving, and so was Alfonso, and I worked with Alfonso as a director on other stuff, and e- Karen and everybody on that show couldn't have been nicer, couldn't have been a better show for me. Huh. Right. And it's the most rerun episode of TV I've ever done. Really? Ever. Oh, right. So yeah. Really? Cash wow. and checks on that's awesome. A cash and 20 cent checks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send them. Send them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And Alfonso Ribeiro was a huge racer for a long yes. time. Yes. Yeah. He did Toyota yeah. Grand Prix. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. When it was still the Toyota Grand Prix. Long Beach. Mm-hmm. I remember doing it. But wait, that. back up. Because I just found this out in the lobby, in the waiting room here. Uh, he was on not only Star Trek, like literally on the original Star Trek. The what? one. How? You're not old enough to be. Uh, well, I was, I was seven. So, yeah, I am that old now, but <laughs> yes, uh, it was a stunt casted episode, episode called Miri, if anybody knows it, with Michael J. Pollard and Kim Darby. Sure. About a planet of kids who, who arrest their development because if they get oh, to a yeah. certain age, they get a disease. Freaky. That, right. was, that was when Star Trek was kind of like the Twilight Zone. Super yeah, freaky. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they hired these kids that they didn't want to be actors, but they wanted them to know what the heck's going on on a set. Who better than actors' kids? So my father, who's Greg Morris from the original Mission Impossible right. series in the 60s, and my, sis, my sister and myself, my sister Iona and I, were in there. And then so were Martin Landau and Barbara Bain's kids. So was uh, Mr. Shatner's kids. So was Leonard Nimoy's kids. Was this a way to get around paying you guys? Maybe. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was a like minimum a kind of thing. thing. You know what I mean? It's definitely you know, sweat, sweatshop stuff. They probably paid them very little. Very little. Because I, I you weren't SAG at the time. I was not SAG at right. the time. But, but if you look at pictures of me in the show, I'm, I have no idea what's going on. I'm sure. just like clueless. Right. <laughs> you have right. a cool outfit? Was this- oh, it was awesome. I literally am the boy in the combat helmet. <laughs> I gotta go back and watch it. Oh, is this on your IMDb? Yes, can we it is. can we find okay? I was it that is. your first That was the first thing. That's ever. incredible. I mean what a so let ever. me ask you this. I, I, like and we'll talk about the exact thing with Seinfeld, but like Star Trek, 
you know, it's got to be top five most influential things to ever happen mm-hmm. in, in entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Did you have any inkling or, or did anyone involved have any inkling back then? Or was it was, you know what I mean? Like, w- at what point? I think Gene Roddenberry did. Ah, right. I think he did. Okay. I don't think the world did. Right, but I think well, it did. It only ran three seasons. Only ran three never seasons. had ratings. Oh, the exactly. life was in reruns for sure. Exactly, and, right. and well, the conventions. They started the conventions. Yeah. Uh, Comic Con. The whole thing is started yeah. from them. Yeah, right. Uh, I just got back from Vegas from the Creations uh, Convention in Vegas for four days, and the fans are fantastic. They go deep in into this world. <laughs> yes. I mean, deeper yeah. than oh, I yeah. could yeah. ever go. Way too deep. Right? Well, have way you seen, too deep. Have you, have you seen uh, uh, Trekkie versus Trekker? <laughs> yes. Like, it's one of the best documentaries <laughs> ever awesome. made. It's 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 because there are Star Trekkers mm-hmm. and then there are Trekkies and there's a difference and they hate each other of mm-hmm. course one is like canon right it has to be legit follow it and then the other was like fan fiction oh I have no e- idea oh, okay. I have no idea I'm not quite sure about that <laughs> specific <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, I just remember the, 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 the Spiner fan the woman who was obsessed with Brent Spiner who lived in the on the uh, you know the valley side of LA it was like well I know that if you go over that hill that's Beverly Hills so he's somewhere over there so whenever I need to feel better I just kind of like gaze up the hill <laughs> oh they are devoted <laughs> and I happened to see I saw him at Dupar's in the farmers market like the day I had watched that and like no one knew who he was and I'm like this is the craziest world <laughs> it you know? really is yeah. but you know shout out to all the fans because without him you know sure we sure. really are Th- this movie's about people that are off the deep end yeah I mean, this we, is the friend the fringe yeah. element, yeah, yeah. but look, we're, we're gonna go. We're gonna talk about your your car, your passion, and the yes, Hot Wheels please. collection, and all of that. But can we just sit a minute on your dad being a famous actor and mm-hmm. you getting to hang out with the, all those the, the, the actors of your father's generation, who you we talked a little bit earlier mm-hmm. about from Mission Impossible, Martin Landau. Right. Uh, what was that? Let's. So you're you're a Hollywood. <laughs> you're like a Hollywood kid. We're yeah, we are. We're legacy, and, and um, it's 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 rarefied air. I love it. I'm super blessed to have had all of these experiences. Sure. One of the reasons why I'm a car person is because my father was the grand marshal of many events, like the California 500 at Ontario. Oh, no kidding. Uh, Riverside. Wow. Really? Uh, yeah, Riverside when oh, it was running. Wow. Long Beach, the last time Mario Andretti won there in a Formula something. I how how did he was. get to be grand marshal? Because well, he was the star of Mission Impossible, the number one show in the world. Was he a car uh, he person? was the voice of Mercedes Benz. He oh, and Peter Gray. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, they were the first real automotive voices that sold cars on right. TV. And now it's John Hamm. Right. Now it's John Hamm. People listening so that's an the, idea of, the, of he's carrying the torch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So um, because of that, talking about who you meet, I remember being on the rooftop at Long Beach and Muhammad Ali was up there. <laughs> Come on. Steve McQueen was up there. Paul Newman was up there. <laughs> all watching the race. <laughs> right. I mean, these are, and then I did. That's uh, in some way. And were you talking to them or just oh, yeah. looking at? Yeah, well, oh, they're wait, all wait, my wait, friends, wait. all my dad's friends. You know what I mean? They knew us because of my father, so it was like See, we guys, were on the inside. Guys like you fascinate because I remember, you know, on on Spike's uh, show, we had we'll get to Bosch too, but we had mm-hmm. Titus on. Titus Welliver is a star of Bosch, and he's telling us some stories like, yeah, you know, so like Thanksgiving at my house, we'd have like Marlon Brando, uh, John Lennon. And Miles Davis, they'd come over. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, they're my dad's friends. I'm like, you had Miles Davis sitting next to John Lennon and Marlon Brando. Yeah. Marlon Brando got a little anti-Semitic towards the end. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> what just what kind Marlon of out. life is this? You know? Right. I, I got so, the like, same. That's, dude, that's amazing. I yeah. mean, Muhammad Ali, I, I, I saw him twice. I, saw, I, was in New, I used to live in New York, and he was coming out of a church, and I just burst into tears because it's like, it's it incredible. Amazing. Like, I mean, he's an amazing the man. The most famous person on earth. On earth. Time. Yeah. Probably earth. of all time. They said it was him until until Clinton and then oh, Obama really? supplanted really? Really? Uh, Clinton. Yeah. It's a very American centric. Uh, no, this is like. It if, was. It was, nice. yeah. <laughs> well, it, was J, it was JFK before Ali. Yeah. 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 Uh, so. So, but I don't think I heard. Did, did you answer Johnny's question? Was your dad like a, a like a car guy at all? He like, wasn't really a car guy at okay. all. I mean, he appreciated them. But and you he, had some nice Mercedes. He had some great Mercedes. <laughs> great. And, well, his car was a 280 SE 3.5. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's the ooh. kind of car. That's a car I would you, love to get. You see what those are selling for? Oh, my God. Every car I want to buy again. 600. Back? 600. It's just out. Yeah. One, sold, one sold at RM for 600. Oh, so I got to keep working. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Right. <laughs> I, gotta, yes. I need another yes. series. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, my dad, that was his coveted Mercedes. It's a two, okay. silver 280 SE 3.5 okay. black yeah. interior. Oh, man. Beautiful. And, Beautiful. Like, and hand And did he get it? Hand-built. Did he get it from voicing? 
or from doing was the probably a compila- a combination of the mission stuff and okay. voicing all this. And he was just a, a great actor at that time. You know, okay. he was really but you said he did he did the he did the VO work for Mercedes for Mercedes Benz, Benz. Benz commercials. Yes, yeah, on camera. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was okay. great. Okay, it was great. Uh, but he wasn't a car guy. I mean, that, my dad was an electronics wizard on the show. Couldn't change a light bulb. Interesting. <laughs> acting, baby. Interesting. Wow, that was, that was, that was acting. Yeah, okay. that's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so then, where did your did your car interest come from? You know, being very you, specific. So I was on the <sighs> track team. I'm telling you, this is yeah. if you're if you're a car person, you know exactly where lightning struck you. Uh, I'm on the bus, freshman track, and all the dudes have like a car and driver magazine, some magazine, Motor Trend, probably Road and Track, something. And I didn't know anything about cars. Mm-hmm. And they were all like, wow, what about this? And what about that? And I'm like, I want to be cool like that. <laughs> I want to be like that. You know, so I started to get into cars. I had been collecting Hot Wheels my whole life. Okay. So right. I loved that I had the tracks and everything, you know, and the loops and the turbo right. thing. Burr, I had it all. Um, but I didn't know anything about cars. So right. I just got into it then because I wanted to be part of the group. I wanted right. to be one of the guys. And it just took me, I, I spent years loving Porsches and Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Maseratis okay. and studying them and so always them. always exotics, the yeah. exotics not the Mustang Camaro. no not a muscle car person okay <clears throat> All right. more of a, a international European well, l- guy let me ask you this though so did you you know your father was an actor did you ever want to do anything else besides acting mm-hmm. race car driving yeah I wanted to be an automotive designer uh, oh. I went to Valley College for nice. my uh, whatever my particulars yep. and then I went to Art Center on the weekend. You did? Oh, so wow. I, I attended Art Center for about six months. Oh. And then when it got to be too math and engineering intensive, whoop, see ya. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. I just wanted to draw pretty pictures of cars. Sure. You know, sure, yeah, sure. how they function, that's your job. Right. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I started uh, really getting into the automotive world was that. And then my father had friends like Gene Hackman or Mike Connors, who was Manix, <laughs> and they were all car guys. You know, right. all yeah. of them. Yeah, so, Hackman. Yeah, hack. yeah, yeah. Big time. Uh, no, but I mean, I mean, look, I mean, uh, French Connection, like that. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, I think, like, one of the, the, oh, greatest, the greatest chase, chase scene ever. Of all, one and of it all was, time, it yeah. was, um, Heat's pretty good. Heat's good. No, but it was, Bullets uh, not bad. it was, uh, it was, it's no Ronan, but, uh, um, Ronan's awesome. The driver in, uh, in French Connection was the guy who was the bad guy in Bullet. Uh, yeah. Bill. I can't think of his name, but it's the same stunt guy. He was a stunt guy. Really? They just put the black glasses on. Really? Yeah, and and because and him and McQueen, I guess, were like super good buddies, and uh, just because of the car thing. Right. And they apparently they went out to I think Willow Springs, and they practiced driving really fast next to each other. And what they were doing was they would like put their hand on the other car, like lean out the window and grab the passenger side, and you know go around Big Willow at wow. speed to get ready for the chase scene and bullet. And you know, because if if you do look, they are they're both driving. You know, yep. McQueen did the driving. Bill Russell, no, it wasn't Russell. It was Bill something. And they're really close. I mean, they really yeah, are, they are close for actor. Well, it turned out one guy's not an actor, but you know, it was, it was pretty impressive. And that's how they they trained it. Yeah, and then I know he was the. I love the driving in that French Connection. I mean, that's, and I think Hackman did some of that. He did. Yeah, he did. He was a wheel man. Yeah, I mean, big time. Yeah, and um, and but he's chasing that dude, uh, Bill. Whatever. Are you so. a wheel man? Is it on your? Is it on your? Is it on your <laughs> SAG you, resume? It might have to be man. now. No, Ed. I mean, yeah. uh, look, no, because I, I am. I'm a Skip Barber graduate. Okay. Okay, so I, I come at it legitimately. Uh, when I go up Angeles Crest, I'm very very safe. Good. But no, I meant from the Hollywood because because the joke in Hollywood is. Um, if you can drive, if you have your driver's license, they'll put precision driver, right? <laughs> right. Because a lot of New York, a lot of actors that come out of the West, East Coast, they can't drive at all. Right, so, like, right. And then if you can do any kind of, like, anything involved, if you drive a manual, then you're like stunt driver one. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it, like right, it's, right. it's if, that if level. If you can ride a motorcycle, go-to. right? Yeah, you could be an action movie. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. So now, I, was, I was wondering, are you, actually, do you have that? Like, as, as your talent list, like, no, do you put well, down, like, probably, you could be a probably, but I, you know, it hasn't been called on, but okay. yeah, I probably put it down tennis, basketball. Race car driving. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm that guy. All right. Uh, let me, I, I wanted to ask you real fast, just because you brought it up. You own every Hot Wheel since you were a little kid. You must, it's, I assume the collection's quite large. No, I don't own every one. Oh. I just have the ones that I collected from I like, I don't know, 10 to 15 years old. Is there anything old? super valuable in there that you that Probably, you but you, I haven't, I haven't well, if you have like any of the first year cars. I got yeah, them. Like I got them. If you have, if you have the, that 67 Camaro, I got which it. was the first Hot Wheel. I got it. Like, it has a Landau roof. Yeah. It's so, blue dude, with a Landau roof. You should go on eBay. Just check it out. Yeah. I have the Red Baron. I can get you. I met the guy. I, I, oh, I, our, new, I, our new guy at uh, 
Motor Trend, our new communications guy. Yeah. He from, spent three years at Hot Wheels. So well, we could, yeah. But we so could. I, I judge the uh, Hot Wheels Legends, Legends Tour. Legends Tour. Yep. Um, and it, 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 people bring their actual cars, and we pick, oh, okay, and this will go what? on. And there's a national company. Oh, I'll get you in. Yeah, no problem, man. Right. Oh, you haven't seen this? Like, no. they, they bring their own, like, cars that they've been building for years and yeah. they compete on a national stage and there's 20 shows and then the 20 winners go to Vegas SEMA. yeah SEMA. They go to SEMA and then one's picked and becomes a Hot becomes Wheel becomes a Hot Wheel and <laughs> it's awesome wild. It's uh, in fact the one I picked was it, 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 it's called The Nash the actual name of the car was The Nash Hole and <laughs> Hot Wheels was like we're gonna change it to The Nash but it's it's this killer like hot rod Nash Metropolitan. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. But every time I see one at the grocery store, I buy it and I put it in the safe and I have probably like thirty of these. That's they're so they're never cool. gonna be worth anything. But I'm like, yeah. I voted. It was like you know was, that first year I did it was like me and like it was Lena and Corolla and um, Dave Merrick and it was just yeah. that's, it was a, that's super, a good group. That's it was cool. Group. It was cool. Yeah. I know I know Adam pretty well. I don't know him well, but I've, I've worked with him yeah. before. The, one of the best Instagram videos I ever saw was um, like like some Subaru ST whatever ST. parked right. and a dude shows the Hot Wheel of it yeah. and goes and puts it on the guy's windshield right. yeah. and then he waits to see the reaction and the guy comes out and he looks on his windshield and he sees it and he's like, oh, oh my God. He's looking around like, what? And so he goes down, he's almost in tears. It was like... I would love it when somebody put an R8 on my windshield. All right. Well, so Johnny so, done here. Uh, I I think I I think I have an RW. I don't know the color though. Yours is black. Black. Yeah. I think I have a blue one. But Sharpie. But I met the guy. I met the guy. One of the one of the fellow judges has the world's largest Hot Wheel collections. Wow. He lives in like DC. So I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna check it out when I go to DC. Um, but he would know like what everything is worth. But he's. It's crazy. Hmm. It's I mean, he's you know talk about Trekkie versus Trekker like I bet. this guy. Okay. So yeah. So then, what did you take your driver's test in? Oh yes, this is a classic um, question for the inevitable. What did I take my driver's test in? And what'd you get? <laughs> what did you get? <laughs> I barely <laughs> passed because <laughs> me too. Me too. here's why. Right when I came out, I looked left, and I looked right, and I went. Hmm. I didn't look left again. again. Right. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. a big he one. He goes, Weak. I almost zotched you Ooh. right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, but you made it. So I made it, but okay. I barely made it. I screwed up on parallel parking. <sighs> I did really poorly. And yeah. the guy's like, mm, practice yeah. that. Here you go. I got 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But on we the, also- but On we the al- driving test? Oh, yeah. But we yeah, also- but your, your mom would have like beat you. Or no, 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 no. We, the, the, the hot ticket, I grew up in- Camarillo, and the thing is, everybody knew you go to the one DMV way out in Satakoy, which nobody ever oh, went and to. Oh, there's no, and there's it was no literally, yeah, it yeah. was literally a go out, and you drive around the block, pull up in and park it, and they're like, you're done. Yeah, Satakoy is like uh, it's a farm it, town. It, yeah, it's farming. And, and they, they, they manufacture like work shirts. That's right. a big industry. <laughs> like yeah. the, the kids out there drive at like nine yeah. years old because they they'll, yeah, they'll the drive the, the farm trucks. trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, do you remember? Do yeah. you remember what you took the, the test? Um, I think it was my mother's. Chrysler LeBaron. station wagon, oh. town and country. Town and country, okay. nice. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, with the wood paneling. You gotta have the wood paneling. <laughs> wow. that was, yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah, that was a tough car to kind of parallel park. Okay, cool but, car in high school. Do you have a cool car? No, I had horrible cars in high school. I had a Pinto. It's horrible. Oh. I had a license plate that said "I intend to," <laughs> and people would say, "Man, are you gonna get a new car?" I go, "I intend to." <laughs> Literally, that was my license plate. I had a vague, wait, my sister had the silver Pinto. That was a really nice one. I had the green Pinto. It was horrible. Pea green. Terrible. Oh, that's a good color. There was a dark green. My friend in high school, she had a dark green Pinto. And I remember I'd always find myself like, that's actually kind of okay looking. What are you thinking? You know? <laughs> and then I had a Cordoba. Because oh, my no dad kidding. was doing Chrysler yes. commercials. Nice. So we got a Cordoba for free with, with the Corinthian. But I didn't have the Corinthian. Uh, yeah, I, I had the, say, there's your, uh, I had the uh, Spanish uh, interior. There's your Ricardo Montalban right. Star Trek connection. That's my yeah, connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My did, wait, did you know at the time these were un- that it was an uncool car? Like when you had the Pinto? Or not you when you're 16. It's right. not uncool. Okay. And you had a Cordoba? Right. But and a Pinto? Pinto was uncool. Always. Okay. Always. And okay. we didn't know it was a death trap. Okay. Right. But, yeah, it was a Pinto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was a Pinto. Yeah. <laughs> horse yes, anything named after a bean is usually, <laughs> it's usually not. I, I like to look at it as a horse. Right. Well, that's, that's what Ford. <laughs> 
But again, that's the problem. If you live in Michigan, you've never seen a Pinto bean. <laughs> yeah. or, you, or you're never the Chevy Nova. You've right, never right. like taken first year Spanish. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So then you, okay, if we heard the part, they heard the part about Valley College and then Art Center, I want to be a car designer. Mm-hmm. But then you ultimately, how'd you find your way to acting? My dad was doing a movie called Comtac 303, Combined Tactical Unit 303rd Division, about an African American division in Anzio, Italy. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was starring Billy Dee Williams, my father, Henry Fonda, Chad Everett, I mean, Merle Haggard, I mean, crazy cast. Right. It never got completed, but I went up there for a summer vacation job, ended up getting a role on the movie. Mm. And you, were you were filming in Italy? In the Mojave Desert. Oh, okay. Uh, doubling as the desert, right. you know, kind North of North African, African, African desert, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and everybody was awesome. It was an incredible experience. And I came back, and I was like, this is it. Right. This is what I'm doing. Right. So I went into class right away and started acting right away. And I left my house like six months later. I left. I moved out at 17 to do what I'm doing. Right. And your parents wow. were like, "Cool, do it," or like, "Oh." Yeah, my mom was freaked out. Oh really? And my dad was like, "Yeah, good luck." Um, really? Yeah. Okay. And my mom was freaked out, and my dad was like, "All right, is that what you want to do? Sure." And, and was he mom- going to help you? you no. Have a name? Not at no? all. Not at all. Not at all. He's like, I nobody helped me. Okay. Uh, you do your thing. Okay. If you need huh. advice, you know, help right, you out with advice. Right, but right. you know, he he knew those bricks were hard, as he always said, and he was willing to see what I was going to do. Right. Interesting. Okay. I think he's really proud. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I know yeah. he's really proud. Okay. What were you driving on your casting calls? The, Cordo- <laughs> the Cordoba. <laughs> I was driving a Dodge Charger SE. Uh, Special edition. What, what, what year? year was this? this, is, this is, is that, is that like a two? Three? Oh, okay. Okay. It so was a nasty cool. uh, partial Landau roof. Yeah, yeah, It was yeah. a big old... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is still pre-gas, pre gas before V8s were making 102 horsepower, Yeah, right? no, this was okay, like th- this is still... 127, oh, okay. yeah, so it was, 50. Yeah. It wasn't a big block, big yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah. Small. Like, capacity. Small. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Uh, but that was my car. That's the car I would drive. And I, I, I needed steering fluid, power steering fluid all the time because it had no gasket. I mean, you know, <laughs> people, uh, people, uh, they look at old cars with uh, rose-tinted glasses, but oh, they're yes. all terrible and they all leak. Yes, right? yes, they it was horrible. They constantly leak fluids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, put yeah. as much power steering fluid as gas, just about. <laughs> right. Because could you imagine steering that with no power steering fluid? I mean, I remember my buddy in high school had this horrible, it was like an 80 Thunderbird. Right? It was a bad <laughs> car. It was as bad as cars get. Uh, but like we had to drive around with like bottles of antifreeze because it would just there was something wrong with the radiator, no money to fix it, and it would just start like you know boiling over, and we'd have to sit there wait mm-hmm. ten minutes, put it in, and it was fine. We'd drive around, and then like randomly a day later it would happen again, and that was what it was like, you know. Yeah, we forget those things. Yeah. Right. But yeah. then you go to Meekum and you see him sell for yeah. hundreds right. of thousands well, I, of dollars. I guarantee you a 1980 Thunderbird will never Probably not see that. I don't think they exist anymore. I don't, yeah. I've never... They're all powder. Red, yeah. red dust. Yeah, they're like they're like the first gen uh, uh, Hyundai Excels. Like just gone. There was a billion and they're gone. <laughs> they don't exist on earth anymore. Wow. So I, yeah. I'm conscious that you do, you're, you've been a working actor for a long time. I think you've mm-hmm. done a fair amount of podcasts and people have probably asked you a lot. Like, what was your first big break? So yeah, what was your first big break? If we can just quickly, read. the Young and the Restless was my first. Oh big no, break. kidding! Yeah, I oh. did two seasons on the Young and the Restless, and um, the number one daytime show at the time. And my character was just bananas. I went undercover as, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, a white guy. Oh, oh, I heard. Oh, yes, I read this piece. Are you, you serious? Had, yes, yes I'm serious. That's insane. You did reverse ba- blackface. That's like, I that's did like it. white chicks like I, way yeah, before, yeah, yeah. which I love. Great movie. It's a great movie, it is but it is a great comedy. Great. So right, imagine we were like, playing this like <laughs> down the line. You gotta be kidding! Me. I, no, no, I thought they were kidding me, and you know what was, like, what was the? Wh- I play this very <laughs> <laughs> so difficult to explain. Incredibly. Um, at the, at the, let me ask you something. So what year was this? <laughs> what year is this? Eighty. No, no. Yeah, eighty-two. Eighty-two. Before people Three, had brains, apparently. Eighty-three. Like, well, okay, but uh, but like, they on. won Emmys like best show, best makeup, best. Right. You gotta I'm telling you. I used to watch a lot of soap operas around then because my my grandmother w- right. w- raised me, uh, and um, she was. Uh, I remember One Life to Live. I don't remember this. They went back in time. Yes, they yes. literally wound up on a on like a Wild West, and it was like Asa Buchanan. I think. <laughs> 
and and Clint and they're like you know they they left whatever town and well, they did a lot of drugs on these uh, the, the script I mean, writers. I, I these. think they just needed you know it's like hey we're down in the rating. Like, <laughs> yes, what do you let's, got? Let's like, throw a curve. Like, time you know time travel. Time travel, <laughs> white guy. But yeah. you know, they, <laughs> but, but so, they're, so what they're was a grind, the... right? The soap operas are a grind because you got to do a serious just, grind. Serious grind. I started I started with a paragraph in a phone booth. And I ended my two-year stint 30 pages a day is oh what my, my character was having to learn. But so let me ask you, what was like when they're like, okay, listen, uh, Phil, you're going to be a white guy. What what was, A, your <sighs> thought and what were your like co-workers <sighs> think? What, like, <laughs> Well, I, I was playing this this young guy who was working for the police department and they sent me undercover as a drug dealer. Right. And then I got found out, like they, they found me out. By my brother, who was also working for the mob. I mean, it's just, these yeah, storylines so are crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he finds me out. He's like, we got to do something. They'll know. So what are we going to do? How are we going to get you back? You know, uh, white guy. You know, that's your next undercover gig. Right. And no, so, but what did you think when you- I when was you shocked. Saw... I was shocked. I didn't know how they were going to pull it off. And I thought it would be like maybe a week or two, six months. And what was the oh makeup? What was the makeup like? Brutal. Every day you got to go three, four in. hours. I got to look put this it up. I'm googling. Oh, this. you're this just gonna blow your mind. This is well, incredible. Blow your mind. In uh, looking back at it now, if you were to watch it, <laughs> are you a convincing white guy? Yeah, <laughs> I look like Perry King a little bit. If you ever know Perry at all, is Perry King's an older actor for you uh, television it, fans? But yeah, I looked a little oh, like that's Perry incredible. King. Incredible. Uh, it was. It was. It was challenging. Okay. Now I gotta, okay. Oh, wow. So you're on this. You're on the number one daytime show yeah. in, in America, and you. This was your first big break. Yes. What happens to your fan mail? Like did, 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 it went it, crazy. I mean, then, everybody loved it. I mean, honestly, they they loved it. I didn't get much in the in, in, in pushback at all about it. And my interviews would say, "How many white actors have played Othello? How many?" I mean, not we're not doing sure, Shakespeare, sure. but it is entertainment, and you have to kind of like suspension I, I was, of disbelief. So okay. it was all. Do that. you know? I didn't mean from you, a controversy perspective. I'm wondering whether like were you were, were you married at the time? Were you dating? I was. I was married at the time. I was going to say like yeah. were women like throwing themselves at you? Well, they always you, do, Ed. But I, yes. know, I, I, I get that. <laughs> yeah. I got that kind of vibe. Yes. But I was wondering whether like it goes from like you know mere hundreds to tens of thousands. It, it went to tens of thousands. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it went to oh, tens okay. of thousands, and a lot of people still remember that and and uh, remind me of it. Uh, Did my, you? My chagrin. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm tripping out of it. Did you know the writer that came up with like make Phil a white? No, guy? no, okay. no. I had no idea who oh, actually that's came up with that. It was a crazy thing. It was crazy, and so they would do studio um, tours that's when they first started and they would go <laughs> and there's the actor who's playing the white character <laughs> and I even mean, feel like I was in the zoo you know? I mean if anyone's listening nuts. who makes uh, you know TV <laughs> shows like this could be a TV <laughs> yeah. show right. right this is a reality show to go back and redo this whole thing yeah oh yeah God. right like, like, uh, like well you uh, asked uh, that, uh, that's uh, the answer I mean that's just absolutely okay. wild okay, yeah, okay. Wild. so then yeah. so then you got your first payday with this with uh, uh, the Young and the Restless, restless. Yeah. What, yeah yeah it was good what did you um, what did you do? What did you reward yourself with? What was the car? Did you, did you do it? Uh, I bought a 1982 uh, 911 SC. I was say. Okay. Ah, yeah. What nice. color? It was root beer brown. Nice, nice. color. Nice. I loved it. Uh, interior? Black? Tan. Tan? Camel. Tan. camel. Tan. You know, uh, Spike and Zuckerman just got an 83 SC <sighs> convertible. It's like champagne. It's just it's They're the flawless. nicest it's cars. Flawless. I yeah. bought it in Vegas, and the first time I drove it was from Vegas to L.A., and it was just gorgeous, you know what I mean? I just didn't, I mean, I had driven a lot of cars before, but I had never really, I used to work at a place called Beverly Hills Car Company. It was uh, owned by the yeah. Vandegrifts, yeah, yeah, by yeah, Chick yeah, and Skip yeah. Vandegrift, way back I, in the day. I used day. to look in the window. Yeah, yeah, so I was the wash guy. <laughs> okay. That's my first job was right. like that. I washed Ferraris, and it was when the Aston Martin Lagonda first came out. Yes, that's what I used to look in the window at. Yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, yeah, the yeah, Jacksons yeah. would bring their cars in, so I met all the Jacksons there. And so, I mean, that was like the, the Michael Jackson? Michael, Jermaine, yeah. Jackie. No, the other Jackson. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, look, Jackson. He's, Reggie yeah. Jackson. He's yeah. Yeah. Jackson. He's hanging out with Muhammad Jesse Ali. Jackson. Jesse Jackson. Jackson. He's hanging out with Muhammad Ali. Of course it's Michael Jackson. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Jermaine had a Mercedes-Benz 6.9, you know, with... with. Oh, no, it was... I drove Daytona 365 GTB B4s. Daytonas, I drove. It's a pretty good first job. Yeah. 246 GTSs. I mean, I drove Mira P's. I drove a lot of serious cars. By the cars. way, did you see what he did? He didn't say Dino. He just said the two, two, yeah, yeah, The six. nomenclature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just that's the thing is like real Ferrari guys, Don't they, they consider it a Ferrari, not a Dino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, would, I would say. Yeah. Did you? I, who ta- so I if your dad say. was in a car, who taught you how to drive manual? Did he touch you? My buddy Jim Hyman. Okay. He had a tough um, name. Oh, no. Jim Hyman. 
I'm actually going to go with him to Lefkafelka for Oh, yeah. So, oh, I'll be there. Going? I'll be there well. we'll be there. I'll meet Jim. Yeah. He's got a 72 911S. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Seven, You're still friends with him. That's awesome. Yeah, he's but, one of my best friends. B- back to what you're saying about the, the 82. You know, it's funny to me. I, I did a, a head-to-head, which you might have seen, but I did it. It was like a 68 911T yep. Yep. against a 67 Corvette. And what was shocking to me was like, you know what? The only cars that were any good to drive until about, I don't know, 12 years ago were 911s. Like, everything else, the steering sucked. It's just, I had a 1980 Corvette. It, it was like a truck. It was horrible. And I would have rattle trap. Yeah. And, and uh, this No, one, this really? One, this one was all right. It was tight? This, this, eh, not tight, but it was all right. Tight-ish. It was all right. I've, okay. I've, by the way, I've driven untight 911s. But, you know what I mean? but the yeah. steering yeah. was good. You know what I mean? Like, right. like I, I, I remember driving, and I'm like, this just feels like a modern car. And it was, a, it was an unrestored 68 mm. That my friend had bought and sold. You know, he bought it when he first moved to L.A. and made a dollar, and then he sold it, and then he bought it back for, you know, 80 times what he paid for it. Of course, And And I'm driving this Corvette, American sports car, and it's like, it's terrible in the canyon. <laughs> Great in a straight line. Like, it, you know, 454 with side pipes. It's it like couldn't king touch it. of the yeah, road. Yeah, couldn't touch it. But like, I'm like, oh, man, Porsche, they really had it figured out, like, way before everybody, as, for, as far as production right. cars go. I, I think so. Yeah. Um, that's why I've stayed with him for so long. Yeah. It's Audi's the first Audi I've ever owned. Huh. Yeah. Do you have an exclusive? So you have the 82 911 SC. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your ne- what was your next big one? The 88 Carrera. Okay. And then uh, I had a 93, a 95, 993. Do these all, do these correspond with life events? Like, yes. Like a big, like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like a and me selling them corresponded with life events as well. Oh, like, that's I, right. I, I, like, the kid, daughter kid goes to college. Yeah. She went to Oregon. She wasn't on scholarship that year. I your beautiful watch. Do you do, you do watches the same way? Not really. Not okay. really. I just, I just yeah. like a good watch. And I, yeah. and I actually, I, I keep time with it. You know, if you, yeah, sure. a lot of people, they have watches. It's not the right, right. time. Mine's right. accurate. See? Yeah, yeah. You're a watch guy? Mine's yeah, super yeah. accurate. Oh, look, at you, look at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, No, I'm not. Oh, the battery died. I'm not. I'm, I'm, my my um, technical stuff goes straight to cars. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's my All right, my so let's love. jump ahead to the Seinfeld Please show. Please do. This little show, because that's a pretty big Porsche guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Was, that, was that a thing, like, when you when you got the gig, was it known I mean, first of all, you, you Jackie showed up. T- tell us about your okay. character. First okay, so all. Jackie Childs is um, the send up of Johnny Cochran. Uh, okay, right? I was I was going to be my question was you're obviously it's a parody of Johnny Cochran. Yes, it's yes. a parody of Johnny. And Cochran. it's so it's so good because oh, this is right, right. <laughs> this is right <laughs> around this is the time because this is ninety. When was this? What it was, was right around the OJ trial. Right. I mean, so that's n- whatever n- years 95? those were. Ninety five. I suppose no, so. I don't know. That's, that was ninety five. Was when he when he was in the. Well, 90, it was 96. So 95 or 96. I was at college, so it was 95 or 96. So this would be that. two years yeah. probably or so after when he's on trial. It had to be around then because I bought my 95 after I'd done the show for a minute. O- OJ might have, you know, sorry, the trial OJ was, was 90, 95, 96. He was just 93 90, was the murder. The right, right. Yeah, yeah. So we were just on the heels of that right. Okay. that we had been watching every day right. for a while. So right. th- so for those who are, we have a lot of young people who mm-hmm. are like not Yeah, there was a show called time. Seinfeld. There's, well, no, no, no. <laughs> there was a football, there was a football player, player named OJ Simpson. Simpson. <laughs> who had married a woman yes. named Nicole Brown. Yes. Whatever. He, yeah, he's yeah, the and, most fam- one of the most famous uh, guys news yeah. car chases in history, right? Oh. His white Bronco on the on the four hundred five, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. running around town, or his one ten, was nope. it? Oh, four or five. Oh, four well, five. hang on, it was all five. over the place, but right. the, but the the Pulitzer winning photo was four hundred five South, right? right. With and all the cops, behind all the cops, behind and him. I, I know that because my, my my wife's a lawyer and one of her professors. Um, we used to work for the LA Times, mm-hmm. and the guy that took the photo, it was like this is the most amazing story. He'd moved to LA that week from Nebraska, so he had a he had a Thomas guy. That's how he got around. So right. they're like, "Go, he's on the 105." So he didn't know where that was. So he finally he saw a uh, a news truck. This is a photo. This is a print, you know, newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's just following this news truck along because they have a satellite and they know right. where it is. And he jumped on top of the news truck, Turned and they're stop. screaming at him, "Get down!" Get you know, because like they don't know who he is, co- competitor, and he gets that photo, and he wins the wow. Pulitzer surprise. He's a young guy, you know, and anyway, so wow. th- this guy, uh, I think my wife got off him an auction to raise charities, and I have that photo hanging up in the house, and it's like it's signed, weird. and the the whole story of it, it's like written on the you know, piece of paper on the back of it. 
Huh. That's I mean, that was like good. the most LA moment of all time. Of all right? time, right? That whole time, like, yeah. There's a major celebrity. <laughs> every LA, you know, like, a, and also like a black guy being chased by the LAPD. Yeah. You know, like crazy. Yeah, it, right. it was Attempted, nuts. Right, and, uh, being driven yeah. by his best friend who's yes. trying to get him. Yeah. To, you know, uh, just, who Al knows Collins. what they were trying to so, do? So right. So so, so fast so that forward. That was what was going on. Right. Yeah. Fast forward. There's a trial for OJ whether or not he, he murdered his wife. Mm-hmm. And then and Ron Goldman, who's buried next to my dad. That's right. 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 And uh, the trial lawyer is Johnny Cochran, who is one of the many, but Johnny Cochran, well, he's the lead attorney, oh, lead attorney, celebrity attorney. Yeah. As a very, very flamboyant way of speaking, mm-hmm. dressing, dressing, mm-hmm. just a big, big personality. Your character in Seinfeld is a parody. Of, of, of that of character. Okay. And uh, the irony is that I had been going to the same barbershop as Johnny Cochran for my whole upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew Johnny Cochran before anybody knew you Johnny know, Cochran. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. So what was Personally. He, like? he was what you saw. Okay. I mean, like, my dad's a big personality. So you go to a black barbershop. It's like the center of the universe in the African-American oh, community. Yeah, 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 so there's yeah, my yeah. dad there. There's anybody like Elgin Baylor might have been there. I mean, oh, these are serious people. And then Johnny was a DA driving a yeah. black uh, Cadillac Seville I'll never forget it and he would argue about anything the, the Raiders <laughs> moving down to LA you know he was just that guy right so when I got the call and literally my agents were like they want somebody to do a takeoff on Johnny Cochran I'm like oh Mr. Johnny yeah I know Mr. Johnny <laughs> so so I go in and it was literally like the Motown Mafia I mean yeah. it was a bunch of brothers in suits right. on a 100 degree day right. at CBS Radford and and so I, I do I was like a pre-read because they weren't sure whether or not I could do this I do the pre-read with Michael Dorn who plays Worf on oh, Star Trek oh, I, I know Michael yeah. Dorn my wife Who's, was in a play with him big yeah, plane yeah. guy yeah. big yes, plane guy yes, right? yes, Huge yes, plane yes, guy. yes yes anyway he and I were the only two who pre-read I said like three words and he's like okay you got it you got it let's go so we walk over to Jerry's office there, parked in front of a fire hydrant, is a Mexico blue Turbo Carrera, Jerry's, obviously. Yeah. And we go up, and I start my thing, start doing my thing. He goes, stop. What? In the middle of an audition, an actor is being told to stop. Right. He goes to the air conditioner. He turns the air conditioning up. He goes, man, you're so funny. You're making me sweat. Keep going. <laughs> I go, all right. <laughs> and they call me on my car on the way home on a Saturday. Right. You got it. Nice. So that's how I got the job. And did you was there, did you and Jerry talk about cars at all ever? Did you yeah, we did. Okay. We did. We did. He gave me a beautiful Porsche book. Oh yeah. I told him. He goes. I'm. He goes. I'm gonna make you sick with all the cars and stuff. I go. It's okay. Yeah. You're sicking me. Come on, bring it. Right. And so I met Sam Cabilio, who was one of Jerry's guys, and I said, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna buy a Porsche from Sam, and I'm gonna meet you and Jay up at Pebble Beach for the Porsche because it was like their 60th or something yeah. that year. They were the mark. Right. At Pebble Beach. He goes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. 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 Phil. I bought that 993. Nice. I drove it up, and we met them on the 18th green. Nice. And I was like, bro, what's up? He's like, you made it. I'm like, we made it. It was like a dream come true. I met Derek Bell that day. Sure. I mean, it but was this, a Porsche. What, what, this was what? Files what, year, what year was this? Whatever the, whenever the 60th anniversary of. Well, they're 70. Uh, 70 years. 10 years ago. 70 years ago. Is so, 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 years ago. Yeah. 15 oh. years ago. yeah. That's when Pebble was still sort of small and, and it was rocking and not like you yeah. could you could walk around not still. the commercial yeah well was, Jerry could walk around yeah he I could. mean that was that he was the, and Jay he was well yeah so he was he was he couldn't you know his manager um, George yes yeah, died passed. so he couldn't come up because we did Spike show from from Pebble. <laughs> But like I remember, you know, Spike was saying like it's gotten to the point where you know when if Jerry and Jay are sitting next to each other, they can't walk. It's impossible. They just can't walk. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's, but it's, it's crazy. A, you know, Jerry Seinfeld. Um, my my own personal opinion, I love the guy. Oh yeah. yeah. I love the guy. I, I you know I just think he's such a real cat. Um, he's very bright. Yes. Yeah. If he likes you, he supports the hell out of you, and that's what he's done with me. All the things that I wanted to do with Jackie, as long as they were cleared and they were, you know, they were within the the canon and the legacy, he's allowed me to do. Because very generous. So you're doing very generous. you're doing Jackie again. Jackie is still alive, and you're doing a Snyder's of Hanover I am. pretzel campaign. Campaign. Yeah, I'm their I'm their spokesperson. Yeah, so but it's, it's <laughs> Lord Jackie. Yeah, uh, it's hysterical. It's I mean, very very funny. Yeah, it's a, it's it's great. They're leaning I think into I've it. Seen it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, no, they've no, just it's been clicking. wonderful. Yeah, okay. wonderful for me. So I love he and Larry big time. Yeah. Okay. What's so I so I, you know I know Jerry mm-hmm. uh, a little bit. Um, uh, what what's Larry like? Because because like I said, I was I was this curb guy. I was just like this is this is Larry's kind of cool. Yeah, he's kind of a cool dude. You know what I mean? It's like it, you would think he's a a bit 
I, I listen. I don't know him personally. I have to yeah. lead with that. I okay. know him professionally, right? And right. I've seen him out a few times. And, sure. And but my thought is that he created Jackie. I think Jackie was his construct. Of, obviously, you know, yes. it's very much yes. like Larry. Yes. Um, but yes. but those guys again. If you are just you, yeah. You're not trying to be a funny dude. You're not trying to impress right. them. You're not trying to get a right. job. You're not trying to whatever kiss their ass. They're just as cool as anybody you're going to meet. Yeah. This is nice and no, supportive I mean, as anybody Jerry, you're going to meet. It was, you know, it was funny. Like, with, I met Jerry. I met him at Pebble Beach, actually. I, dro- mm-hmm. I drove. Mercedes had one of his old cars. I don't know if you ever heard this story, but it was like, it was, um, he did a, I don't know, a Mercedes commercial, possibly. It may have been an Amex. But anyways, it's like, instead of money, give me a car. So they built him this, like, half Ren Sport, half <sighs> AMG. It was like a 500E, but it was badged like a 600E. And mm-hmm. it was... It was crazy. But the interior, and apparently it's a true story. He was, like, eating breakfast, and they called him, like, yeah, what color do you want the interior? And he's, like, uh, and he was eating oatmeal with blueberries. He's, like, oatmeal and blueberries. And so it has this awful interior. It's, like, like the, the color of your jacket, oatmeal, little little lighter, oatmeal gray. It's a nice oatmeal. color jacket. I know. But, but, but imagine as an interior of a car. It, oatmeal. Like, the most boring thing. And then, with, like and then it's the only Mercedes ever made with blueberry leather. And he sold it to Spike, and then Spike saw the not only, not only saw the interior, but then like the, on the, the the door sill it says J S. And Spike's like, yeah, I can't drive that. So Spike's getting rid of it, or he's giving it back to him, or something like this. And he took off a sticker, and so without the sticker, you can't register the car. So like, it, Spike was like, I've seen Jerry Seinfeld angry twice. This was one of them when he realized <laughs> I took off the sticker. There's no way to register the car. So like, the car wound up in Mexico um, because like it, it, it couldn't register it here. It could register anything. Anything in Mexico. Yeah. So it wound up, like Mercedes brought it to Mexico and anyways, it showed up in the Classic Center and and so I I told Spike I'm like, hey, I'm driving this car and he's like, you got to meet Jerry. Like Jerry's gonna be in Spanish Bay. Be there in 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, and I'm like. Hey, and he's like, "Are you Lieberman?" You know, Jerry Seinfeld. Are you Lieberman? I'm like, yes, yes, I am. Are you, are you Seinfeld? I think I said. And you know, but like, he he's he's a he's a cool, funny right? guy. Yeah. But I, I I always say this though, like he, you know, there's there's famous. We're talking about Muhammad Ali. But there's there's like ultra famous people like that. Jerry's getting there. Yeah. If like he's ultra famous. Well, he's not Muhammad Ali. You, you know, he's but 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 like. Every two seconds, because we're standing outside, somebody runs up. Ah, Jerry, uh, 1998, First Street and Second Avenue. Uh, I was eating a bagel, and I said you had nice shoes. And he's just like, eh. You know, like, and that's like every two yeah. minutes. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Fame yeah. is daunting. I'll take familiar. Yeah. Because familiar is kind of like, I'm kind of. I, yeah. I call it the three step. So they walk by you in three steps. Later, they go, oh. Yeah. I'm only famous like at Pebble Beach or Bahrain, you know, <laughs> or of Angeles else. Crest. Yeah, Angeles Crest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big, big Newcomb's big, Ranch. I'm big in. I'm big in Newcomb's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many. So. Uh, uh, there are many rap lyrics that say, "I would. Uh, I'll take the money." F. Yeah, F-A-M. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's where I stand. Like, yeah, that's funny. Like, yeah, you guys, yeah. you guys, go ahead and be famous. That's yeah, cool. hey, like, hey. I just want to cash checks. Not happening. I'm aspiring to that. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah, just yeah, be yeah. Well, Jerry cashes checks. Yes, he so, does. And he's famous. See, that's so. ultra ridiculous. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. the fame he doesn't really. It's the checks. He's, okay. And oh, the cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. oh, his cars so, are so beautiful. Have you have you have you seen a lot of his cars? Not a lot of them. Okay. Um, so you're like okay. Yeah. We're similar. We're on the outside. It kind of scares in. me to see all that stuff. I've just got. It's I a little got, too much. <gasps> I wish he had. I wish he had interests outside of Porsche. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. He's first of all, you you'd like this. He's a huge Subaru guy. Oh yeah. He's a huge Subaru. He's got in, in. He's got a house in Telluride. I shouldn't say this, but is he? Because uh, I'm, I'm, I love Subarus. Yeah, he's a big Subaru guy. Big Subaru guy, and he, he gets like all the special edition WRXs oh. and STIs and all that. Big Alpha guy. Oh. He actually has like a gazillion other cars. He's just Not known as a Porsche guy. I think he has more than. We, we talked about this with Spike. I think. He, I think. I think he has more than Leno. Huh. More? But it's yeah, but he has them like in three states. Leno has like right. a bunch of you know, but it's hangers. out there and yeah, wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got interesting. I mean, not that Jerry doesn't, but oh, yeah. Jay's like Leno's a like crazy a... diversity. Oh yeah, oh, oh, steam. Yeah. He's got brass era cars. Yeah. He's got battery. We'll I did. Battery. I'll, I'll just plug it. <clears throat> well, yeah, we saw you. Yeah. you did I, I was on Leno's show that uh, premiered last night. Which, by the way, you're going to listen to this in December. Today's September, but. Um, 
and it was a, it is a segment called Stump the Car Nerd. I'm, I'm on the Brie Larson episode, uh, and uh, two of them I got. It was it was a, it was a uh, uh, Mura Lamborghini Mura. Was know? this where they blindfold you and you yeah. have to touch it? I, so I, I touched yeah. it. I knew a Mura, and then it was a Citroen DS, which I know more about than like anybody. And but the other one was this thing. I can't remember the real name of it. It was a Daimler Dart. So it was it, in in England. It was a Daimler like uh, uh, Dart, and but they because. Here, the Dodge Dart, they had to call it like the Daimler mm, 250. Mm, mm. So it was a Daimler 250S or something. No one's ever heard of it, seen it, whatever. It's like a, it's like a Sunbeam what? Tiger, That's little a, tiny V8. How does it work? Did he? Does he? Does does Jay guide your hand? Did you touch a specific part no, of okay, the car? No. Okay. So you I'm, I'm, bl- I'm blindfolded. Thing? I'm blindfolded, and the garage door is shut, and they start it. Oh. So like that was with the mirror. It was sort of a get dead because you know it's a V12. So I sort of was like, all right, I, I can tell it's not a V8. It sounds like a lot of cylinders. It's a V12 sound. Um, but, but you don't get a touch. You don't get a touch. Oh yeah, yeah. The, then so so then they. I'm saying like, what did you touch? Where you? That's knew? what I want to know. What oh, gave the, it away? The mirror? Well, everything. But I gra- <laughs> I, gra- I grabbed the 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 the, the, uh, the eyebrow. The eyebrow. The eyebrow. Okay. Uh, yeah. I actually, I actually grabbed the vent next to the eyebrow, which is the same shape. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it's by your ankle. So what? It's so low. You know, yeah. What other car so has low. that shape? You know. And then, uh, but the Daimler, I had like zero idea. You know, like, like I, I, he stumped me on that. But then the wow. Citroen, what'd you touch on the Citroen? That rear, I, I, is it a DS? Like the, did yeah, you, like, like, I, I did grab the, the raised taillight. Yes. Because what happened was with the, the Citroen was, was funny. Is it a Cadillac? No, the, <laughs> the, the, the Citroen was like, I, I think they also honked the horn. Like okay. they start the engine, they honk the horn. I knew it like, I literally put my hand on the car. Like this is a Citroen DS. Like, you know, I, I just. Yeah. It was, it, and the producer's like, all right, pretend like you don't know what it is. I was like. How I Struggle a bit. So I just like, like walked down the side of the car, touching it. And then I, I knew where it was. I grabbed the taillight. I'm like, oh, high taillight, Citroen DS. But, I mean, huh. I, I, yeah. That's a good call, Johnny. Well, dude, that's an easy one. That Come was on. an easy one. I suppose so. so. I would call it a humble brag, but he's actually bragging. So, you know, so <laughs> it's whatever. a straight brag. Right. Yes, it's a straight I, brag. I can tell a Citroen DS blindfolded. Okay, that's a brag. That's a huge brag. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so move it. So, so are we off Seinfeld yet? I, well, I mean, Dude, just go ahead. I want to know. I'm having fun. I, I want to know where you got how you you get you're this long time Porsche guy, mm. and then now you end up with an Audi. Because here, here I'll okay. tell, let me just tell you, let me just he, frame he it. He actually up. doesn't know this story. Okay. Uh, by the way, and I, I, and I want to frame it up because I had at the top of my notes, which I didn't print out, but it says I got you know, uh, Mr. Morse is coming in. He's an actor. He's a car guy, and we're gonna say future EV convert. So we're gonna eventually get to how, because I know you're not. I, I read your little yeah. brief. You're not yeah. on board, but not let's. Really. We're gonna we maybe maybe just me. We're gonna try to convince you. Well, that you, that you I, that I actually you, own an EV, unlike the other two people at this table. So oh, oh. hang on, oh. that's mine's electrified. It's not but, an EV. Okay, so let, but let's P-H-E-V. quickly let's let's uh, quickly. It's a Porsche though. Let's quickly get through um, <laughs> the, 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 the transition from one German to the another. To okay. Another. Uh, I. I my best friend in the world is a man named Dr. Herman Williams, and um, he and I went to the Alabama Raceway to drive his Cayman GTS okay. back in the a few years ago. Uh, it was an incredible time. Um, I loved it. Uh, we got back home. It was great. Things were great. He ended up getting cashed out of a gig he was in, made a ton of money. He went out, and he wanted to buy a new car. And I told you, I had suggested to him the Vantage, right, the Aston Martin. And he was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And his son convinced him to get the R8. Fine, cool. Unfortunately, he has a heart condition, my my friend, and his doctor told him he can no longer drive mm. a car. Oh, yeah, seriously? At all. Ooh. At all. And so... I'll, I'll get him back in a car and I'll, I'm going to write this down. Here. Okay. He, um, so anyway, um, he called me. He's like, oh, man, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I, I don't want to sell my cars. I don't want to get... I said, listen, I'll take the Cayman. I'll buy the Cayman from you. We had a great experience in it. I wanted another Porsche. But he goes... No, <laughs> you got to take the R8. Hmm. I'm like, well, I'm not looking to spend that kind of. He goes, when are you going back to Atlanta? Because I was doing a show called Doom Patrol on HBO Max. It shoots in Atlanta. I said in about a week or so. He goes, why don't you? He's in Tennessee. He goes, why don't you come to Nashville? Take the R8, drive it to Atlanta. Let me know what you think. Oh, some very good roads on the way from. Oh Nashville. my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah. you had never set foot in around or smelled. No, in, in, right? no, didn't know anything about it. Not you, at all. And you're just like and you get in, and you're like, and, but did you like it at first sight? You're like, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, I mean, it's just class. It's just a beautiful piece of art. Um, and this is a tw- this is a two eighteen twenty eighteen. Okay, yeah. So it's the first gen of the second gen. Exactly. Right. So they, hadn't ref- they just refreshed it. Right. Yeah. And the whole hundred nine hundred ninety nine. 
made. I don't know what that Yeah, means. and rear drive, it's, it's rear the first drive. rear drive uh, RA. Howdy, ever. Yeah, and then they detuned it a little bit, powered mm-hmm. 562 horse, which V10. was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the greatest V10 and the Sounds greatest so transmission. Beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. it's a beautiful riding. It's a dri- To me, it's a driver's car because it's a mid-engine, normally aspirated, rear-wheel drive. And, and yeah, I was going to say, because they pull about 175 pounds out of the front, so the mm-hmm. nose suddenly lightens up, and the steering does get remarkably better. It sits yeah. so it curved. Yeah. It carves yeah. so yeah. beautifully. And the seating position, the fact that it's mid-engine, you are like, you're not looking. Well, you know, you're a Porsche guy. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't have a big thing in front of you. No. You're literally like, it's, at like the road. it's as close to being as in a center seat, like race car. Right. Like that. that was the first, I'm, first one the, I'm one of the weirdos. I really like the way the second gen looks much better than the first. I get that the first was out there oh, and it had, cool. it had the fin, uh, the, the side fin. blades. Side blades. Yeah, but the side blades just covered up for a poor design. They, they got it with the second gen. Well, no, I think they did. The big. It's tight. The big yeah. criticism of the first gen is, is Pinky the Brain. It's got that yeah, really it big. It looks like a dolphin or a yeah, porpoise. It's got a yeah, huge yeah, yeah, yeah. bubble in the head. Yeah, but I like it. I like them. And the gated manual is pretty cool. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That, that was pretty cool. That was pretty That's, cool. Pretty, cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But, okay, but you love. So you love. I, I brought it back to him and I said, well, what do you want for it? <laughs> what, uh, okay. yeah, what, yeah, what will yeah. you take for it? Right. He told me and I. I bought it from him. Nice. I took off the stripe because even though I own Hot Wheels, oh, I'm not a Hot Wheel guy. I was going to ask you about that because they all had that uh, they had that stripe. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. It okay. kind of denoted that it was right. a rear wheel series. Right. I just, I'm not that guy. So okay. I want, it's already a badass what car. What color was the stripe? Red. Okay. On a black car. On a black car. Yeah, so pretty Ford GT. Very much so. Yeah. Um, huh. Just not my style. Sure. You okay. know, sure, and sure, so sure. I just took it off and it looked, to me, much better. And... Um, I was going to say because you told me it was an RWS. I remember looking at it and I'm like, I, and I'd, I'd forgotten about the stripe, honestly, but mm-hmm. there was something like, oh, it looks a little different. So, that was it. Okay. That's the only thing. I did. And I took out the, the the Audi badge off the front and the V10 side on the side. Oh, smart. I oh, just wanted that? to be. No, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Well, it's a black car. It's like it's super sinister now. All the yeah. chromes, little chrome. I like bits. it. I like your style. Thank oh, yeah. you. Yeah. Thank like you. It. Black right. wheels. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. yeah. Okay. So, so Phil. <laughs> what can we do today to get you in an EV? Like, uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I did put on my take? list a couple of the cars, like the e-tron is interesting to me. Okay. But it's so beautiful. I think yeah. Audi is just oh, making oh. beautiful cars. Look, you like uh, it better than the Taycan. I kind of do. Yeah. It's, well, listen, yeah, it's I'm gonna, I haven't. I drove both of those within a week of each other: the Taycan Turbo S and the RS e-tron GT. And the uh, the Taycan makes like you know whatever it is, 50, 60 more horsepower. But I mean, you're talking like. The Audi only makes 690, where the Taycan makes 750 or whatever. But the Audi, I think they had like six more months, 12 more months to like really screw Develop the car it. together. Yeah. I think it drives better. I really, really, yeah, I really do. The RS drives better than the Turbo The first RS. time I was up Angeles Crest, I was following a Taycan. Niles' father, Niles Evans' dad, um, had one. And so he, they were like, oh, yeah, Niles is going to get here and he's going to leave everybody in the dust. And I'm like, everybody? Yeah, <laughs> right. So, right, right, right. so I'm I'm with him driving, yeah. and it's good, cool. And I'm like, wow, this Tycan's fast. Oh yeah. He yeah, pressed yeah, it a little yeah. harder, and I'm with him. He pressed it a little more. I'm with him, and I just passed him on the outside and left him for dead. Yeah, but well, but know. that's because I here's my theory. You tell me if I'm wrong. Above 500 horsepower on a curvy winding road, it's the driver more than it's the car. To me, uh, yes and no. It, it, yes and no. You know, it, it it's it's. Uh, Yes and no, it, because there are still some straights, and you know, like even if you're not a great driver, if you have 750 horsepower and a straight line, like thousand, you yeah. have 750 horsepower, right. you know, 900 so, pound feet of torque. Yeah, yeah, you know, but so, I'm talking about the, the, up yeah, in no, the no, canyons no, for, and for stuff sure, like that. For sure, but like you know, uh, I I drive as fast as anybody up there, or you know, almost. I, I would say, and you know, I I took my Rivian, which is what I think you should consider, <laughs> and I passed every single. Porsche 911 mm-hmm. on the mountain, except for two GT3s got me, and some kind of tuned up M3 M4 thing. Right, um, it's weird because you know you because as a as a person who works at Motor Trend, you were driving at the speed limit on a public road. Yeah, speed limit like, yeah, 55. Still, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, we all do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's I'm what we're sure. talking about. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. What, what are you talking? No, about? nothing. Oh, keep okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but with the Rivian, <clears throat> 835 horsepower, 908 pound feet of torque, with a really good sport mode. Well, uh, but yeah. You know, so it, it's have, you, it's a cool truck. Have you had Have you had a, a, the quintessential EV experience yet? Have you driven I, like a I, Tesla Plaid I have, or I have, a Taycan have, or something? Okay. They're incredible. I mean, they're incredible. But not for you. What are you, What's missing? <laughs> look, you look. You're a purist Porsche guy, and now you got an Audi, and you love <clears> what? What? The, the sound? <clears throat> no, this. <clears throat> The vibration. My butt. Yeah. I, dri- I drive with my butt. Right. You know, it's, it's, and and I don't feel it in those. I feel. That's pretty good. Okay. That's what I feel. I don't feel. But what I want to feel when I turn the engine on, mm-hmm. 
and when I hit the, the right pedal, it's just so then, viscerally not me. Well, let's go back then because maybe you haven't driven the right car. Just, you've, so you've driven, you've driven a Plaid. A Tesla? Or, no, or I have no, not. A model, it was but a, S, a, a model S. Yeah. But like a dual model, like a, a yeah, dual yeah, 100, yeah, yeah. like a, a powerful one. one. Okay. One. Yeah. Uh, you, have you had it? E-tron? Have you driven I have e-tron? not, no. And an or Tycon? No. Okay. You want an e-tron? e-tron? I'll get you an e-tron. I'd love to tr- try one right. for sure. Yeah. Those okay. are, I mean, the that Porsche is pretty special as a driver. I think you know. I I kind of better. I well, but but here, but hang on. I I Same get it car. when they when you buy into it. <sighs> kind of. Yeah. Their their line is it's a Porsche first and then it's an EV. Yeah. Like it's I think a that Porsche and an Audi. But yeah. I I think it I think it applies. So it's maybe. Well, it's a Porsche first, then it's an Audi, then it's an EV. Well, I was super impressed with the Taycan when when I was driving behind it. Right. Yeah. It's it's a beautiful car, and it gets going like stink and. Uh, I just haven't been in it, okay. so I just don't know that part of it. But we, there's one there's one critical point I'm missing here. So is this R8 or one of your Porsches like your daily driver? Like no, you, no, 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 oh, no. What's no, your no. daily? Uh, M, uh, five M Sport, okay. BMW. So then you wouldn't want to replace that? No, nah, that's going to be my mule forever probably. Okay. All right. Because because I'm going to buy other cars that are, I'm not going to want to drive every day. That's the daily, you know. What, what It's a BMW? Uh, 535i. M okay. Sport. See, I think this, this is where we could get you. Right. You could, here's the thing. I will say this. So I got, got this EV, this you know, electric truck, which honestly mostly my wife drives. Mm-hmm. And that's the uh, one with the headlights. That yeah. Are, yeah. Yeah. Funny yeah, looking headlights. headlights. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so she's she's driving, and she you know she like in, she likes the idea of having an EV because it's it's good for the planet and this and that. Mm-hmm. She's driving it, driving it, driving it, and then she goes, "I haven't been to a gas station in seven weeks." I'm like, yeah, you know what time you save? She's like, it's incredible. She's like, I hate, because she, I, and women, I think, more than men hate gas stations. They make a horrible generalization. <laughs> yes. Um, and and uh, she's like, this is, I love it. I love this thing. You know, so it's like, just think about how much time you spend at gas stations yeah. and eliminate that from your life. Yeah. It's just gone. And if it's just your daily to get around L.A., you plug it in at night. Yeah. You wake yeah. up. Sorry, you, yeah. you plug it in at night, right? No, she's good. She's good. She's okay. good. You can't because you, you said before yeah. how she, she'll she'll drive the car down to like I the was, gas car down to zero and never fill. I, I was convinced. I think what it is is like the running out of gas, and you know, a guy will come and bring you gas. If you actually were to you know run an EV down, no one really knows what happens. <laughs> right. So I think she's you know cognizant of the That's fact in her brain. Yeah, right. and, and, and I want to, but I will fight yeah. you on this. Uh, yeah. Women don't like gas stations thing because it is a it is a generalization, and we had I've mentioned yeah. this before. We had a, I had a conversation with a, a CMO at. Hyundai, uh, is it Hyundai, Angela Zepeda, and she brought a really good point that I had not considered, which is we're all being very EV focused. It's inevitable. We want to push people to do it, but there's a very large portion of the um, of the, of the population that is not quite sold on going to a charging station, perhaps in the middle of the night, that where it's where it's unmanned yeah, and having to stay there for twenty or thirty no, minutes th- to I, wait I, for I, a thing. Let to me t- let me counter that by saying that yes, I, I mean. We, Chris and Leon, she talked about yes. this, where, like, if she she likes going to a gas station. Uh, well lit. Because it's well lit, and there's there. somebody there mm-hmm. in case something weird That's happens. True. Which, as a large guy, I never think about. Right. Me either. Yeah. yeah. So, so so that is, I, yeah. I get that piece where, you know, so for some people, until we figure out the whole charging infrastructure piece and make it feel safer for all, yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to yeah. have a lot of convincing to do. But yeah, of, cor- of adjacent course. To this. Why don't we put I'm, charging I'm, stations at... G- 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 gas stations. I mean, you know, why don't we have well, a, a twofer? Yeah, we no, double I it know. up. That, there are, there uh, are shells, startups doing that. Shell's yep. doing that. But but again, you would probably just get a charge of your house because it's, right. it's easy to yep. do. Yep. And like you just wake up and it's charged. That is a very you know, good point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, it's and like, if we can get the visceral that I'm talking about with, and I don't mean computer generated no, sounds. No, 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 no. I'll let I'll let you I'll let you drive my truck. And then if I get, I, I'm supposed to get a loose in a couple weeks because right we're doing this major software update. Uh, I think that's the one that is going to – if people get a chance to really drive it, like it's like oh, – because cause the guy who's the you know CEO, CTO of Lucid, you know, he was the chief engineer at, uh, at Tesla. But before that, he was the chief of Lotus. and Peter Ronson. Peter Ronson. Wow. And he can drive – like I showed wow. him to drive the Lucid with him, and he's wearing like racing boots. And I'm laughing like huh? – Old man and you know, and then he's like on my butt on Angela's crest. And That's I'm like, interesting, amazing. So his yeah. side about Jerry, because when I went to Skip Barber, um, Kelly Collins was my driving instructor, and I was like, and, and Jerry was his student as well. And I was like, so Jerry Seinfeld, he's not, he can't. He goes, Jerry's feet are amazing. <laughs> I'm like, what? Because you know, then it's three pedals, right? Yeah. Uh, he goes, 
that dude can heel toe like nobody's business. I'm wow. like, what? Wow. He's like, yes, his hand, eye, his feet are incredible. I'll never forget it. And I was like, I had a whole new respect for Jerry so Seinfeld. Wait, did you go out, were you on track with him at all? No, no, no. no. Yeah. This is Laguna so Seca. That was our, our, our track. Paint, show, him the, show him your, your toe. No, but I did run up on my best friend. Okay. I, I bought my best friend and I the three day. And so we went up to Laguna oh, Seca for yeah. the three days. I've done that. That's good. It was on Skip Barber. It was Barber Dodge at the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. so did you do the you do the formula? Yeah. Oh, nice. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four so, speed. Yeah, 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 man. And so it was the final day, free run, and and the perfect thing happens. I come out of the Mario Andretti hairpin. There's my buddy in front of me, and I'm like, it's on now. Yeah, it's yeah Free yeah. running. There's no, you know, and I pass him like he's standing still and left him, and I just loved it. That's a great. That's it was a great the best program. ever. You know how it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. And and also, I mean, you know, we, I, I think as a California, I take this for granted, but like, man, what what a great track, you know? <sighs> like, like it's really hard to beat Laguna in the U.S. I can, I can beat you in Europe, but yeah, like, yeah. Everybody says Watkins Glen, though. Like, our, 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 one of our previous guests was like, you had to go to Watkins Glen. Uh, so. I, li- I like Lime Rock. You like Lime Rock. I've, I've never been to Watkins Glen. I neither have I, but everyone but, says. But, but I haven't been there Lime Rock is awesome because it's, it's like right. Laguna is 11 corners. And Lime Rocks, I think, is nine, and maybe if you do the chicane, right. it's ten or whatever. But anyways, but there, there's these simple flow tracks. Even though Laguna has braking zones, like mm-hmm. they're, they're, they never really stop the action. No, nope. and go 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 at go. at eleven. You got to stop. You yeah, but even that, even that, like you're like ready for it, and you're like, as soon as I'm done, I'm back mm-hmm. on the gas, and then you're wide, and when you come out, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and so I like these classic tracks. Whereas like if you start to get like sixteen, twenty two corners, it's like I don't know where it's I am, I don't know rough. what I'm doing. Everything's too tight. Throwing away, there's no throwaway corners on any of these. Just no, go, they're go, they're go. great. And then the corkscrew, come on, that's right. that feature yeah. right there is ridiculous. I mean, yeah, for me it's turn six. It's your favorite turn. Yes, I put a jaguar <laughs> under the wall over there. So, I you know. I turned around the, the yeah. dodge right at the corkscrew. I went down. Oh, <laughs> seriously? I was pointing up the hill. Uh, Not my best that's hour. No. I I was in a oh boy, what was it? It was a Z06. It was a C. Must have been a C7. C7. Yeah, because we we're going into the Viper ACR. So it's mm. a C7 Z06, and it was a little bit of rain. Mm. And I started going down the corkscrew, and I went the nose the wrong way. It just the rear end started sliding, and I was about to crash. And then I just tugged all the way right, and the thing whipped 180 because it was just had no grip, and I was pointed the right way suddenly. Perfect. And I was like. We're just gonna go back to the pit slowly. <laughs> Code Brown. Yeah. Code yeah. Brown. Yeah, I've seen a Bugatti <laughs> crash there. Oh, nice. Yeah, during the historics, wow. just oh. smashed up. We were oh. like, ah. Everybody was like, ah. So I remember, I remember when that Ferrari ate it on the. Course, all right, right. right. We're, we're trying to sell an EV here. So, oh, so well. Yeah, let's go back. You're, so they, a you're, Lucid what? Sapphire driven by Ben Collins on the. Uh, at, they did the uh, Pebble, the Laguna Seca. Uh, sorry, yeah, the Laguna Seca hill climb. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear about this? Yes. So uh, tied a La Ferrari. Um, what? Yeah, in the hill climb, it was thir- they were tied for third place overall. And so they're is, fast. We know, but we know EVs are fast. We know they're well, performance we, we, oriented. Now, we know, yeah, no, I think so. This, let me. I, I just want to your your daily this five thirty five. Mm-hmm. I this is so this is like a two thousand thirteen thirteen. So yeah. this is it manual? No. Uh-uh. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out whether. Here, here's what I suspect. I suspect that we'll, you'll get in one of John. John will help you get into some of these fast cars. And I, I think you'll probably still not quite like it from your steer, from the from your rear mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. Nothing nothing to do with the amount of power because all EVs are fast. They're fast. They're so fast. Right. And they're, they're solving a little bit for the steering feel. I think your actual, my theory is because of where you came from prior to, and it's all right, it's not like a super heavy car, but it's still heavy. Yeah. I think what you're actually missing is the lightness. You're missing that 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 real tactile mm-hmm. flingability, mm-hmm. which honestly is going is one of the last yes, barriers. Yes, that's a hurdle. Yeah. It's going to be the the last barrier for electric vehicles. But is I, I, reducing I, the mass. I also feel though, like you know, there, there's a, and you know, like you said, like with fake sound. I think what's happening right now is that people are like, how do we make this more like a gas car? And I think what people are going to eventually get to is. Let's stop trying to do that. Let it be its own thing. And this is what a really good EV is going to be right, like and right. sound like and feel like. And I right. think Porsche's getting there. Uh, I got a ride in. Me, me and uh, Reggie Watts went over to uh, Spain, and we got a ride around in the uh, Mission R. Mm. And first of all, insanely loud because it has two gearboxes, two single-speed gear. Well, they might be two-speed. But anyways, straight-cut gears, horrible sounding, like just it was oh. deafening. Uh, <laughs> but like – yeah, it it had the lightness of this. I mean, you know, from the passenger seat, it really? like, turned like crazy. The brakes were insane. I was it was a race car, you know. 
Um, I saw, and I don't know if I did, uh, imagined it, but I was at the Father's Day uh, car show on Rodeo Drive in Beverly mm-hmm, Hills, mm-hmm. and there they had McLaren electric vehicles? A hybrid. They probably, oh, had, they hybrid. probably had the Artura, uh, Artura I think it's GT. called. Yeah, yeah. the Artura. Uh, which is having some t- teething issues at the moment, but yeah, right. it's a hybrid. It's a V6 yeah. with a hybrid assist. That was I saw. That was a quail, right? I saw yeah. a, a, a terrible branding decision on their part because I walked by it not knowing wh- whose car it was. I was like. Because there's no McLaren signage anywhere. Oh, it was yeah, just a car yeah, of the thing, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, this is one of those weirdo exotic like vaporware he, like hyper well, that's, cars." That's you know, they're, they're, Ron Dennis is no longer there, but in many ways he can never leave. Right. He, <laughs> he hated signage. I know? was like, oh, "What?" Did I, yeah. I walk right by. I was like, "Oh, that, he, cool looking car that's never going to be built." And then, like, yeah, and then like there were like three of them in front of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. I mean, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all well, driven by beautiful o- women. O- o- yeah, Ogara coach is right, right there. And, right, you know. right, right, right. Well, I didn't know if that was a straight EV or right. hybrid. No, or... not yet. But they, I think McLaren has a EV hypercar coming. I mean, everyone does. Everyone does. They're going to have you know? to. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's, Thank well, ding, ding, ding. The other because the other thing, like it, it is and isn't because like, like so you know Bugatti uh, was purchased by Rimats and so now it's Bugatti Rimats and so the next. Uh, the, the Chiron replacement. Mm-hmm. So they, they just they showed the Mistral, I believe it's called. Yeah. They're going to build 99 of them, and that's it for the Chiron, and that's it for the W16. But uh, Bugatti customers demand a 16 cylinder. And by the way, there's you know 500 a decade, so it's not a lot of customers. Right. <laughs> um, so they're going to keep. I hear what I'm hearing is they're going to keep 16 cylinders. It's going to be a V16. Because the W16 just can't pe- pass the EU6 emissions regulations. But it'll be a brand new scratch V16 build. that runs on a V4 for, for fuel. Yeah, time, probably. Right? But it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be a hybrid V16. So it'll have right. RIMATS technology. So it'll probably be like 2,500 horsepower. Jesus. 1,500 of which come from the gas and 1,000 from the motor on each front wheel or whatever. But so, like, a lot of people are going to do electric supercars. But I think on the very high end, because yeah. there's so few a year, like, there's that law, that EU exemption, like Lamborghini, Ferrari, and Pagani can keep making V12s into the foreseeable future because globally you're talking about less than four thousand cars exactly, a year, or five thousand exactly. cars a year. So, mm. Mm. and the, and the, you know, and it's it's the it's the what's that guy's name? Thorsten Veblen. It's the theory of the leisure class. Like, you know, when electric lights were new. It was very romantic to have an electric light dinner because all the poor people had to use candles. And once electricity became cheap, candlelight dinners became romantic right. because everyone had electricity, but you could afford to burn candles. Interesting. Right. Well, it's like, so. or like uh, having a having a tan. Back in the day, if you were a member of the the leisure class, the ruling class, you were you, you were pale. Yeah, you pale never right? had to go because you didn't have to go outside and work in the fields. Right. right. Now it's like. Everyone's you, inside the office in the cubicle. The skin is green, yeah. and that you want to be the guy who shows up like sunburned after Labor Day because right. you were out. You were out on your boat, or right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. So Cocoa like, Beach, Florida, right, wherever. Things, things uh, so, 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 what's the pitch on me getting an EV? So, so you're well, going to drive my truck. The, yes. Okay, that's that's a good pitch. <laughs> Part of it is look. I spent the he he has one now. I just came off of our SUV of the year program. We had an unprecedented number. To over half the field was some form of electrified. Wow. I spent hours, days, uh, our photographer, Brandon, who's here, shooting all these stupid EV car pictures, right? We, When you spend a lot of time in them, and I spent the last week just driving, drove the Rivian R1S, I drove the EV6, I'm now on this Volkswagen ID4. Mm. Like, I don't know what you do when you're driving your daily or just stuck in traffic, but they're, they're like meditation chambers now. They're oh. so quiet. They're mm. smooth. They A lot of times, if you have a good system, they're, they're mostly driving themselves. You got to have your hands on the wheel. But... It's actually much more relaxing to yeah, be in and, this and the, car. Yeah, and the one pedal driving when, oh, yeah. it's, when it's really programmed well is is great. You put on like high regen, and you basically you know when you see a yellow light and you would normally be lifting off the uh, throttle to go to the brake, you just come off the throttle and they're just programmed. They just stop. Or in stop and go traffic, it is I, it is yeah. reading the car in front of you, so oh, yeah, you, yeah, you can yeah. let the you can let your foot off the throttle, and it's still. It's doing the high region, so mm-hmm. it's slowing you down, recapturing some of the energy, but the car is actually reading that you got to stop anyways, so it brings you to a stop. 
and then but lots of gas power cars they do, do that, that. Yeah, but yeah. it'll and it'll and it'll pick up again when the traffic goes but it it's that you're not you're getting that high regen that one pedal driving plus I, I, i'm going to have to get used to that yeah, yeah. It's, it, yeah. but uh, you know it's funny like again my wife like i was like here's your new truck baby you know and she comes back she's like i hate it i i go what she goes I, you come off the gas and it starts slowing down and then like a day later, I'm like, what do you think? She's like, oh yeah, it's actually pretty good because you just have to come off the gas. You don't have to hit the brake. <laughs> right. And like, and the end, your brakes last forever because yeah. you never use yeah. them. Yeah. You know? It was like the episode that Spike, that sense. Spike had, we had Spike on. We were telling yeah. his wife like, you're gonna, yeah. you're no, gonna I, kiss I, me. I heard that yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And it happened. Right, it happened. She yeah. fell in love with him all over again. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, that's what he said. I've, I've heard, yeah, <laughs> let's hear her let's story. Her <laughs> I prefer to believe Spike. I'm a married man. Right. I want to believe Spike. But look, I think the acid test and he, your man right here, and I can help you too. You're in Manhattan Beach. Come, yeah, yeah, come yeah. by the office. I will. We, we, I will. When we have stuff. I'll, 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 I'll shoot you a text. Mm. But in fact, yeah, probably like tomorrow because some of these are going away. But if you get some seat time in some of these newer vehicles, especially the obviously the performance one, I think that's going to sell you as you're a performance nut. But maybe it's the other stuff too. Like again, if you, I'm finding now my day finding a time in a car to like think and not be on a call or anything and like having this this isolation chamber useful for me i also right, have right. toys at home that i can drive when i want to i'll, I'll say one more thing just since we're doing this like i like currently i have a audi s8 down in the parking garage i drove and that's you know 563 horsepower whatever it is uh, 590 torque i drove a cadillac escalade v up to pebble beach 682 horsepower Jeez. And they all feel slow compared to my pickup truck. And really? they are. Yeah. Because, again, way less, not only way less power, but, like, you know, in a regular car, it turns out when you when you are going 40 miles an hour and maybe the transmission's up in sixth or seventh gear Tenth and you hit gear. the gas pedal, it's got to, like, do all this, this downshifting. Yeah. Waste, waste all this oh, time. Yeah, yeah. This thing just, boop, just Next, goes. Wow. Just a slingshot. Well, you know? you, you, Ed, yeah. you bring up a good point. I um, I spend a lot of time in traffic because I do live in Manhattan Beach and I do a lot of work in the valley, voiceover work, yeah. all kind of work. So yeah. I'm in traffic all the time. Yeah. And I've been taking to learning um, languages like Italian mm. and oh, French smart. and stuff. Good for you. So that actually makes sense to me. Quieter than a gas Exactly. Car? Exactly. Yeah. It might give me another a lease on life and, and not waste as much yeah, time. And it's just one of those things, too, when you stop and think about it, it's like, okay, this is like three and a half times more efficient than a gas car. And I never have to go to a gas station unless I want a bottle of water. You know I mean? <laughs> right. right. Yeah. right. Charging so. at home is a game changer. Well, I'm, sure. I'm, their, I'm their next target because I'm that guy who's still petroleum based. And, yeah. and, yeah. uh, and you get to and, keep your Audi. <laughs> and keep, I, I'll keep everything. I just, I just want to evolve as well. I think that's the inevitability. We're all going to have to evolve EV uh, with this new technology because that's the way it's going to be. And, and yeah. what you're going to see happening more and more is like the best minds at a given company, this is now what they're doing. So like the one example I use is like Al Oppenheiser who was at uh, you know GM and he did the 6th Gen Camaro, which I don't care what you think about Camaros, whatever, that's an incredible, incredible accomplishment as an engineer. And they said, all right, who's going to lead our electrification program? It's Al. So this guy who, you know, I'm sure if you got him alone and, you know, like no one's ever going to hear this, like, do you like EVs? You know, he'd probably be like, yeah, I like Van Halen and I like my Camaros, you know. <laughs> um, but I remember he, he was telling me one time, he was, he was like, you know, early on when they were developing what eventually became the Hummer EV, you know, he's like, you, I can't even repeat what he said, but he was like, you won't believe the levels of power I'm playing with. He's like, wow. you will not even hmm. be able to comprehend, like, you know. And uh, and it's just so, like, when the best minds start working on stuff, the best engineers, yeah. you know, if they ever – if I think he's going to retire before it happens. But, like, if, if Porsche took Pringe or Andy, you know, Pringer mm. and said, mm -hmm. you're doing an EV. How's it, you pronounce Pruninger. it wrong? Pruninger. Pruninger, sorry. It's pre uninger is how it's spelled. But, uh, you know, you're going to do an EV. Like, imagine that guy, what he'd right. come up with. Yeah, you're you know? right. And, 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 but th they have people like that that are doing the Mission R, which, by the way, the next Cayman's going to be electric. The next Macan's going to be but electric. But again, guys like me need to hear you're, yeah. you're on the inside. Yeah. You know yeah. all that stuff. You know yeah. what's coming. I know what's been and I know what I want. Right. I didn't even talk to Johnny about this. The next Porsche I'm going to get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
But I need to evolve and be educated as well. I just don't have that knowledge, right? I have only what I feel and know. Sure, right. sure, sure. So I, kind of we have to be brought into yeah, this world, totally, especially totally, when we're totally such good. dinosaurs. I, you, you know, know? I, I, I probably tell this story as much as any in my career, but I remember when we were in the room and we just voted back in 2012 on the, the Tesla Model S was our car of the year, first mm-hmm. ever electric. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it was ten, year, 10 year anniversary of that. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it was November, sorry, September of 2012 we took yep. the vote. And like it was a unanimous vote, mm-hmm. and all of us were like, no one could. We driven the car, so we understood how good it was. But I remember I said, "Does anyone here like raise your hand if you've ever said personally, professionally that like this thing that we just gave our biggest award to is vaporware?" If you said that, put your hand up, and ten of the eleven <laughs> hands go up. This guy's hand stays down, and he goes, "Well, my mom said there's nothing nice to say. <laughs> like, Don't say anything." Right. And and it was, it, but but we had driven it. That was the difference, right. you know. We had driven it, so you got to you got to drive. That it. is exactly right. Yeah. That, again, we have to be pulled. Sometimes yeah, right. kicking just, and screaming just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But no, and that is precise. I mean, that is honestly that's the foundation for us even doing this, which is so many manufacturers are right now, at this moment in time, trying to make this transition from internal combustion engine cars to electrification from plug-in hybrids to full EVs. And it, because that future, it is inevitable. Like It's no joke. Like mm-hmm. the, the, mm-hmm. the answer is mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But they have to figure out a way to get folks like you to consider this in this moment, and it's really hard because yeah, the, yeah. we are we are like in the golden age of horsepower. We are like in the we are we're driving some of the best internal combustion with the best V eight. Yeah, but they're all slow and you know <laughs> like like again my my eight hundred and thirty five <laughs> yeah, horsepower yeah, yeah, yeah. pickup truck eight hundred thirty five the most powerful Lamborghini ever sure. sold is like seven eighty right. and really it's seven seventy one. But you're not you but you right. see what, but you right. see the problem. Right. Right. We're not reaching a guy like this uh, well, who is very around. who is very passionate about yeah, yeah, cars yeah. because. Despite it being, EVs are all fast. They're all super fast. They're one of the fastest cars out there, right? You're still not reaching a guy who's like, I want more than that. I don't know. Sure, 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 sure. And there are there there are a few that offer more than that. There are, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But but that's I yeah. mean that's the that's next challenge. bastion, yeah. right? It's 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 not just that you have it, it's like how do you get it then yes. to the yes. consumer? How do you mm-hmm. message that? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. yep. right. how what, do you brand it? How well do you, This has gotta be the most annoying podcast for everybody to listen to. Like, well, I would convert to an E V <laughs> if Johnny and Ed gave me special access to a car. Yes. Well, you know, find Come Ed, on the find Ed on social media. <laughs> Come right. on the podcast. But 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 th- this again, this is the challenge like yeah. that Phil's explaining. Like short of that. Yeah. How does a car company reach him? Because he's like, I like my cars. I like I, what I but have. you know, again, I, I said it. Drove up the first time at Angeles Crest behind a, t- a Taycan, a Taycan, and, and no one knows how it's pronounced. I either. I, 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 I say, I, I literally go the Taycan. Maybe it's Taycan. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's like Spike's name, Spike Ferriston. I yeah. just, I just yeah. learned it when you said it. Actually, right, uh, right, Because right. we say Fierstein, Firestein. Anyway. Right, right, right. Um, I was impressed. I mean, that's what's going to get us yes. into the showroom is seeing it on the road. Feeling its power, jumping in the passenger seat, jumping in the driver's seat, and because I have all this Ferrari Porsche in me, that has to shift, and it's only through the experience of it. But it here's, you know, here's this is something a story. Uh, I'll leave the guy's name out of it, but he he used to work for Lincoln, and they brought in our mentor. We'll call mm-hmm. him Angus Make McKenzie right. to do a little mm-hmm. consulting, like look at future cars and like what's what's your opinion. And this is something we all do for car companies from time to time. And, um, you know, Angus said something to the effect of, yeah, it looks pretty good, you know, but remember it takes, you know, you got to build good cars for 10 years and then it takes 10 years after that for people to realize you're making good cars. Look, mm-hmm. look at Audi. That's what, that's what they did, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I think, you know, he, uh, Angus left and they're like, you have one year, you have one year. But, but the, the transition, <laughs> <laughs> the transition part is like you got to build a really good product. There's no shortcut. Right, sure. You know, and I and yeah. I look I look at like what the Koreans are doing, and they're like, okay, we're gonna flood the zone with great products. Oh, like yeah. you won't even you couldn't even find you know you, you know Hyundai's used to be a laughing stock. Kia's mm-hmm. used to be you know like college kids sold them. You go to now to a lot like man, there there's very few um, none. I would say there's no bad Korean cars made currently. Some are mediocre, and they're not mediocre, but in the middle, they're chucking them. And that's they, they don't care. They have no nostalgia. It's boom, gone. And like, here's this. Here, here's you what know? we're gonna do. Because uh, I gotta check whether it's still at the office. But we have a Kia EV6 GT. Nice. Oh, you have a GT. We have a GT. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. We do? Baby baby Tycon Turbo S. News oh, yeah. to Johnny. Yeah, like, News Brandon, to Lieberman. Brandon's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, th- this guy's, by the way, one of the fastest drivers on staff, right. a photographer. And uh, he, if, if he likes it. If then, we can get you into yeah. that thing, I think that's going to be, you will. Oh, I, you, I've heard it. Your I've eyes heard are going like this. I've heard it's so, game Especially when you see the price. Like, I, heard, I heard it's game changing. Oh, it's it's pretty much so. Mind. So if a, a colleague, a uh, guy Kyle Fortune, he he drove one and, and he's like, "It's it, the game over. Like internal really? combustion's dead. This is this is the moment. It's the it, okay it's the Kia yeah. EV6 EV6. TT. So uh, let me check whether it's still in. And, okay, and, all right. And, we'll, we'll and I'm in town, see. man. I'm not going anywhere okay. for a while. Right. I'm here. Well, working. we got we got to wrap it, but we didn't talk about Bosch. <laughs> Oh, maybe I'll come back. Oh, you're okay. definitely coming back. Okay. Oh, this has been definitely awesome. coming back. Awesome. Because, like, have you seen Bosch? No. Oh, dude, I come got a on. kid. I don't see anything. <laughs> dude, I have a kid. They go to bed. Oh, your, your kid doesn't go to bed. He doesn't go to bed. But Streaming. he goes to bed in our bed. Streaming. That's, that's, that's no the excuse. Problem. Streaming. Right. Yeah, no yeah, excuse. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Take a plane trip. you got to watch yeah. Bosch. It's the best. Phil Morris. Thank you, guys. And you're, wait, wait, wait. You're, you're, you're filming. You're going to be filming uh, season eight of Bosch soon. It, well, they call it season eight, but it's actually season two, two of, of the, the a new, legacy. Yeah, yeah like boss, um, like, I don't sorry, know when, yeah. but the, the word is I'm coming in and, nice. and uh, playing this enigmatic John Creighton. It's it's yes. so fun. Yeah, and again, I, it's so that guy is so anti-type. Like I I, I didn't even know it was you. I Thank I you. watched that. <laughs> Thank you. And I mean, it's the most straight laced, yeah. buttoned down, paramilitary, yep. like evil doer. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> People say, "Are you a good guy or a bad guy?" And I yeah. say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, well talk more. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So Can't yeah. wait. I will try to get up. He, he's been talking about Bosch forever. So come on now. Maybe. Get on board. The, I see. think I'm the biggest fan. I mean, he I, was right I, about Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, just saying. <laughs> yeah, this little tiny show no one's ever heard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But thank you, Phil. This was thank awesome. You. Thanks for coming in on yeah. short notice too. This was great. It's really my honor. All right. Thanks. Thank you.